And we're live with another Dash 28 live cast. Uh, I'm your host, Dan Miner, with uh, a couple of commentators, uh, Adam Ballard, Ray Shields, and Rashad Navidi, with Ryan Munsell coming to join later. We're going to be watching a game between Garrett and Blake, uh, who are here to talk about their lists. So I'm going to start off with uh, Garrett's list here. So uh, I will just bring up his list, and he can kind of go through it. All right, here we go. If you would, Garrett. All right, so I start with two hordes of pike with all their upgrades. It's a great start to any Kingdoms of Man army. Uh, and I have four regiments of fanatics. Um, and then a pair of mammoths, two, uh, three uh, generals on winged beasts, one of them has the Pipes of Terror, because I had some points left over. Uh, and then the Captain, and finally a troop of uh, sergeants, mounted sergeants, who are making their first, uh, this is the first time I'm playing with them. That's the list, pretty simple. Excellent. I will uh, swap over to Blake. And mine is pretty straightforward as well. It's uh, a whole lot of columns coming at you. Um, but I uh, have added a couple things now, so I'm trying stuff for the first time as well. But I got a unit of gargoyles, um, two of uh, the mut mutated mastiff hunting packs, both with throwing mastiffs. I have two regular hordes of obsidian golems. And then I have one with hand sanguinary uh, scripture, and then one with the Aegis of Alohi. Uh, then I also have the Abyssal Grotesque with the uh, Potion of the Caterpillar. Um, I have two Hex Casters, uh, both of them running Weakness. Uh, one has the Inspiring Talisman, one has Tome of Darkness. Uh, then I have an uh, Iron Caster with a Shroud of the Saint. Um, he also replaced the Fireball with Surge. Um, I have a Abyssal Halfbreed Champion, uh, just straight, and then an Overmaster Ancient Winged Beast uh, with the Brew of Haste. Excellent. I'm going to swap over to your guys' table, and then I'm going to get you guys to talk through deployment. Oh, just give me a second. <laughs> Wrong button. There we go. Okay, so let's go with Garrett first, going from left to right. So I have a uh, lonely general on wing beast over in the uh, top left corner. Then um, regiment of uh, fanatic, big horde block carrying both my tokens. Two more fanatics uh, looking to get up on that hill. And then the captain behind them. Uh, then I have my other horde, horde of pikes, followed by the final fanatic unit. Behind them is the troop of mounted sergeants. And a mammoth, the uh, another general on winged beasts. The final mammoth, and then the last general on wing beast with the uh, pipes of terror. Uh, it looks like the pipes of terror is actually tucked between the mammoths. Oh, it is. It is the middle one. You're right. He's the odd color. Yeah, the yellow one. <laughs> All right, uh, that's just uh, that is my abyssal happy champion uh, running with the grotesque next to him. Uh, and then I start off with my wall of uh, golems. Uh, basic unit uh, with the hex uh, caster. Uh, the blue one, the blue base is the one with inspiring. Then another golem unit, uh, the iron caster. Oops, sorry. There's the iron caster. Uh, the one with m both my to tokens is the uh, Aegis of Alohi. Uh, and then the next one is the hex caster uh, with Tome of Darkness and the Hans, and behind all that, of course, are the two Mastiffs you already highlighted, uh, right there and there. And then I have my Overcaster and a unit of Gargoyles. Excellent. Well, uh, you guys are playing Push, and we've seen where your tokens are. I guess you guys can hop off and go play your game, and uh, we will see you at the end. Good luck. Great. 
All right. Thank you. Thanks. Stay over here. Okay, uh, Garrett, you're going to have to close this because we're going to be saying lots of stuff. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. And uh, Ryan is also here. So, so uh, anybody want to talk about uh, stuff? Talk about basically maybe the lists. So let's start off with the lists. People's thoughts on lists. Uh, let's maybe talk about Garrett first. What was that, Rashad? I was saying I wanna I wanna know how Blake sleeps at night. That list is heinous. Uh, Rashad, I actually don't think so. It doesn't have the uh, war machines that would make the obsidian golems that that much scarier. Um, yeah, it's got that plink shooting and the denying like you're doing your wounds with the hex casters. It has six, but but it, it's nowhere near heinous. It, it it, it doesn't really have that thing that's going to cause Garrett to have to go to him. Like six shots a turn, if Garrett wants to sit out and and, and really take his time to, to get the charges, you don't have the heavy mortars, you don't have uh, the heavy shooting that forces Garrett to come to him. Uh, real quick, it looks like Blake won roll for first turn and it appears he's moving his stuff, so... Yeah. Blake's going first, which I think all the games of push that I've seen, who goes first is usually the person who wins. So Blake wins. Game over. <laughs> if only Perfect. that were that simple, right? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, actually, because uh, I played my game this yesterday morning. I won my game, and I think I went second, actually. So I've already disproven that. So Ah, jeez, Dan. <laughs> I actually think both of these lists are pretty fun and reasonably fluffy. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you, uh, Ray. I'm not terribly terrified of this uh, Abyssal Dwarf uh, list, like Rashad was saying. I think it's definitely a strong list. It's a good list, but um, one of the things it's going to struggle with is actually getting across the board... Uh, against Garrett's army with those tokens because he's put him on a shambling unit so he's not going to be able to surge and uh, I just played this round with Empire of Dust and I know it really sucks to try and do that and, and he's lined up right against the pikemen so he's only going to be hitting on fives at best yeah yeah so I see the uh, heal six from the iron caster on those golems, and on the opposite side, I don't see very many units that can go through one of those units in like H one. And at the same time, I've got a lot of piercing shooting. I would count counts one, two, three, four, five, six. Is the Tome of Darkness surge? Yes, it is. Yeah. So that was one thing that I thought was very. Um, uh, something that I haven't really seen before. Uh, he has so many golems. At first, I looked at it and I saw one source of surge. I didn't think that was going to be enough, but since he has the other caster with a little bit of surge, I think he's probably in, in the right spot. And, and I would agree with you guys. Like This is not the worst um, abyssal dwarfs that one could see, but I think this is kind of like a very hidden oh, you can't do much to me and I'm going to shoot a lot at you because uh, those golems can shoot and also be searched. That's kind of... Oh, yeah. yeah, the uh, upgrade that he took for the uh, golem shooting isn't a very common one that I've seen so far, yeah. but it's actually pretty good points efficient. And like you said, Rashad, if you're able to shoot and surge into combat, sometimes getting those couple extra wounds is what the golems need to finish something off. Yeah, it's one of those things that makes the ice elemental so good for the Northern Alliance. Yeah, the ice elementals definitely do it better, but uh, these guys are defense six, so. And he, his damage dealing units are the fanatics, and they're speed five, so he's very well within a range to shoot them before they can charge. They are they are wild charge as well. Wild charge D three. Mm, that's true. I didn't see that. Yeah. 
I, I think what it's going to boil down to, um, those general and league and beasts are going to have to get in the flank of the obsidian golems. Because they're crushed two thunder one. If they get a flank, that's a solid amount of damage you can pop in there. I mean, There's so many places where those guys need to be, though. Yeah. Top that off, you need uh, you need mammoths in the flank. <laughs> the mammoths are interesting yeah. Yeah. twice, right? Yeah. yeah. Those can do it, though. It's got base size. They can pull off some shenanigans with corkscrew charges. Oh, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I think that uh, Blake has the answers in his list to the generals. I don't think the generals are going to be getting flanks or getting around the army anytime soon. Because he has the uh, half read, which is great for just hitting him, and he has his left flank set up to be protected with that. And then on the right, he has his speed elements with his uh, overmaster and a gargoyle unit. So he's, you know, he's controlling those flanks, and looks like his game plan is to do that: control the flanks and then push up aggressively with his wall of defense six in the middle. Do you think that, uh, so in this particular case where push and you're trying to get on your opponent's side, is trying to push up the middle like this the best strategy or should he have actually maybe thought about refusing a flank on this one? Well, the terrain is actually really unique in this particular matchup. Um, I don't know if pushing up a flank would have been better when the buildings are in the top deployment zone here. So, really nice how um, Blake's got the half breed on the left flank to kind of control the flyer. And I think you were pointing out he's doing the same on with the gargoyles and the Overmaster, so like the Overmaster right now is placed in a way that he can fly over that forest and pivot once, 20 inches, actually 22 inches, because I think he has an item on it. Mm -hmm. He has put a paste on it, so he can go 22 inches. Um, so that's a very interesting setup. Uh, I think he's doing that very well. Yeah, he's protecting his flanks in a very effective way right now. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, yeah, it's good to point out here that it is tagged improperly in the game, but yeah, it definitely has the brew based on it. And also, he's deployed the uh, Mastiffs in front of the Golems in a way where um, you can't easily double charge the units that you kind of want to get to right now. So let's see how much Garrett can do in terms of shooting them. Actually, didn't see. Did I see shooting in here? I don't think I saw any shooting in his list. He doesn't have any shooting. Did he use his uh, master tactician on the captain? Did he get four units? I don't know. They probably did, but just maybe before uh, before push tokens were placed. Yeah. I mean, looking at it, I think Gare's deployment is probably how he wants it. What he's looking for here. Yeah, if he had already been deployed like that, I don't know if I would have changed much. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what he did? The uh, scouts um, were behind the other phalanx horde. I think he moved them over to the right. You're right. Um, the the forests on this table are going to make oh. the battle kind of very interesting because this is probably going to take place in the center based on the speed. These two armies have and where they are right now and Blake going first. Um, so it looks like in the shooting phase only a single weakness ended up going off. I didn't see encourage anything either, so I think that was the only thing that could see anything. I have a silly question for um push. Do you normally set up your forces such that you can grab the token, the center token, on the first turn if you go first? With your, like, something that can move six inches to go up there and get it? Or do you like the delayed grab for the center token like we're seeing right now? So, for me, that depends on what I'm facing against. If the other opponent also has the, the opportunity to do that first turn grab, I maybe will push up to threaten it 
and try and make it a bit of a standoff. But otherwise, yeah, if, the, if they're slow, like this particular army here, I would grab it right away. Are those golems height three or height four? I forget. Uh, they are monstrous infantry, but I don't know. Let me just take a quick look. Height four, four but so they think. can see over yeah, that hill. The hill. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think getting first turn for Blake was pretty big uh, because um, Garrett could have potentially jumped on the token. Um, he might have been able to do so with like a, a general on wing beast, but I don't know if he really wanted to do that because he's then going to be sitting there and all of that shooting just has one target. Yeah, I'll be it with cover. Cause he'd be behind the hill where he moved to turn one, but yeah, but I guess when I set up, I, I always like to have the option to be able to grab the token on the first turn, um, just to have that as an option in my wheelhouse when I'm playing. So it, it's interesting that neither of them really set up with that that option in mind. That I'm seeing. Well, Garrett had the captain, so he had the potential to, for sure. Um, but yeah, you're right. With the way his wing beasts were, there wasn't really he 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 couldn't have gotten on it in the first game. Do you mind giving us uh, line of sight or front arc for the overmaster? Okay. You can't really see much because that wood's right there, right? Yeah, so we, line goes. yeah, that's crazy. Why he pivoted that way, right? So uh, Garrett's definitely taking advantage of that, as you can see here. I'm gonna say, did Garrett miss that? But he did uh, not. No. Yeah, and, and he's there he does. He just scout. closed off. He just closed yep. off that spot. Yep, that was the play. So, but also he's kind of like protecting all that space underneath that building inside that forest where he could land just to be <coughs> looking into the flank. So that's a very good spot. Yeah, exactly. That's why the mountain scouts are there. Well done, Garrett. Did he leave a little spot though between the mammoth arc and the mounted scouts arc in the woods where Blake could land? Here, What's the, I'm not sure if you could fit a Titan base in there. That was the problem. Oh, you mean just in the woods? Yeah, oh. probably. Uh, but he can't move. He can only go two yeah. He can't but move. Yeah, there, right. Right. Okay. Pathfinder. Yeah, he doesn't have it. He can yeah. go eleven and maybe get pretty close to being out of arc. Out of this arc. So Garrett did something interesting here, though, in that yeah, right flank. The... Um, sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to think... I was just asking if he had haste on the. Right? He does. It, it's marked incorrectly on the the model. In the list, he definitely has haste on him. Uh, Garrett didn't move anything into the forest on the right flank, and I think <clears throat> if. Blake chooses to play the overmaster conservatively, but to park him in front of the forest, not facing inside, and kind of just looking at the center of the board. Uh, that might be an interesting move if he goes for that, because right now the forest is not a good place to land, or like jumping across is also not a good place to land. So I'm wondering if he's going to choose to jump more like, closer towards the center 10 inches. He would, but he would have to make sure to keep out a 13, because these. Uh... These fanatics right here actually do have that 13 inch threat. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can definitely see into that area. So the fanatic moves five plus, so 10 plus D3, right? So yeah. 11 13. Yeah, you wouldn't want to risk that. Mm -hmm. No, you wouldn't. That, would, that would for sure drown the dragon. I really love Spear Phalanx Hordes. I think they are the, the bomb in the Kingdom of Men list. I'm really yeah, happy to take two. Yeah. Like Garrett said, two seems to be a staple in any good Kingdoms of Men army. 
I'm really interested to see how well these fanatics end up playing out as the game wears on. So I, I like Garrett's placement. He's put him on the hill, and I think that he, you know, they're not thick chaff, but they're uh, they're definitely the points where they're what 145 points. Yeah. But if they can go in, do four or five damage to the defense six horde and hold it up for a turn, and it's not even a guarantee that they die on the return hit uh, if it's just one on one. Um, I think that's yeah. what Garrett's looking for in that matchup. And going down the hill too, the extra TCs. Yeah. Right. Hitting on threes, wounding on fours, it's going to hurt. No, I definitely like them. With the dash 15 and being dash 16 with the captain nearby, um, they're solid. Actually, at dash 16, mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if the columns could take them out one on one. Exactly. Yeah. Well, not in one go, but... Uh, oh yeah, because I guess the 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 golems don't really hit particularly hard. They're crushed too. No. They're crushed too, but it doesn't One matter with defense. Wasted, three, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. If they only eighteen attack. Yeah, so you're looking at eight wounds or nine, eight to nine because golems are vicious now. So. Oh, I am a bit behind. They are on the well, top of two already. Yeah, they're finally they're not wasting time. Yeah. The mammoths are also real sneaky. I know so, I've played against him a couple times, and he's caught me out with the mammoths in the flanks. Yeah. So what's interesting here is that Garrett decided not to move the uh, horde of uh, spears with his tokens yeah, I up. That. I don't understand that. At all. I would I would have liked to seen him move up at least just in front of the forest if he was able to. Or just not touch the forest and stay behind it, even. Okay. Well, yeah. that said, though, they are kind of like they, they're they're not particularly slow. So they only really need three turns to get over the center line, right? So um, waiting one turn, I don't, and seeing what's happening, it gives them an opportunity to maybe turn inwards if he wants to. The problem is but that if he moves them further, if he moves them further forward, they might be close enough to the forest or be touching the forest for the half breeds. I'm sorry, for the grotesques to see. And he doesn't want to move that unit too early into combat range of that unit. I think that's why he's yeah, made yeah, it. Yeah. But what are the grotesques going to do to him? They're yeah. going to be hitting him on sixes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see why I wouldn't move it up. Even just not into the forest, just outside of it. Right. I don't see why I don't move him back so far. Yeah, outside of it for sure. But at least move him up, like what? Four inches, it looks like. Keep yeah, he could have, yeah. yeah. Then they could possibly counter charge or charge something that charges the fanatic. I don't know. Maybe he's waiting for this half breed to get tied up first. Could, could be. be. Interestingly, he will tie up that whole flank with what he has there anyway. I mean, it's going to take him quite a while to get through it. Although, I feel like he has a it better, depends. Blake has a better unit than I think. Yeah. Uh, I like Garrett's chances over here on the left flank um, if he had the spear horde moved up, but mm -hmm. so it looks like, uh, I think it looks like he's moving into charge range with the uh, with these grotesques at the moment. And oh, I don't know if I get that one. He's playing it safe. Yeah, oh. but it, it'd be a hindered charge, so I think it he's would. okay with that. So it's I funny because with Garrett, Garrett, I think yeah. I'd be okay with that too, because that allows me to to maybe double bounce, like double pounce on them. And the grotesques have regen, right? Yeah, they do. I guess. And defense five, right? I, I think this is where the yeah. impact of not moving close to the woods comes into play, because if the spear horde, pike horde, was next to the woods, they could move up next turn and really punish the grotesques for for turning that flank once the uh, fanatics and the general hit them. Yeah, right. still might be able to do that. All right, that I makes sense. Yeah, I would be not surprised when he's undoing this one. I, I would have figured. Go ahead, Ryan. Backwards. I think Garrett might be trying to send the phalanx cord into the middle of the board, and he just wants to clear it out first, and he wants to keep like guessing. He wants me to push them 
through the woods and to the left, or you can pivot them and move behind the two fanatics in the middle. Maybe he wants flexibility. I don't know. Yeah. So he's doing something very interesting in the center where he's, he's throwing the Mastiffs out there for him to charge. But he's going to shoot a little bit, put Plink on. I don't think Garrett has any um, heal. So in you order to keep the Mastiffs, that's his tactic right now. The Golems will then be able to shoot. Interesting. I'm I'm interested to see why he, or to hear why he's, like, I guess he's going to fire him at the pikes, because that's the only thing both of them could see. No, the fanatics, because they have defense three, I think he's going to probably yeah. go to maximize a couple of plink wounds on them, because if he doesn't have healing in the later combats with the golems, it might make a big difference if they have a couple of wounds on them. Maybe. Yeah, could, could let the gall one shot him. And the captain actually fights decently, doesn't he? Yeah, he's uh, five attacks, crush one. I think he hits on threes. He's kind of your average fighter. Are the mammoths on the right flank in charge range of that golem horde on the right flank? Not that he would do it, but he might. Looks like he might have one inch range. The one on the fence there. But I think the other one's sitting a little bit too far back right now. And that yeah, might be what him. Blake's doing. He's just moving He's back. back in his yeah. Unit. yeah, he got both of them out. Okay. Yeah, so now there's that choice. <laughs> Am I going to move on top of that hill and charge these Mastiffs after they shoot me? Or Yeah, and I think moving on top of the hill is a pretty strong play here because um, then it negates the Thunderous Charge bonus that Garrett would have gotten if he chooses to charge the Golems. So uphill versus downhill uh, cancels each other out? Uh, they only get it if they're charging off a hill to a unit that's not on a hill. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Get it on the unit on the left, but not the unit on the right. Right. Yeah. So deploying these hills right next to one another makes a uh, makes a difference. In combo, yeah. So I'm not a fan normally of having uh, the same type because there's only two. Thing right directly right next to one another, but I guess you have to try everything, right? Yeah. I've well, seen the table now a few times recently with the large forests and uh, one large building and a smaller building, and I, I don't dislike it. What do you guys think about it? Yeah, I, I like a lot of the Epic Dwarf map packs. There's really just a good variety in all of them. I've had no issues with them. Uh, I've been using them all tournament, and yeah, they, they work well. There's a I couple that are odd, but for the most part, I do like them. You talking about the penis table? <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, do you mind giving us the uh, threat range of this, uh, the general with the pipes? Is he in range of that hex caster back there? This one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I think he is. Yes, he is. He so, is uh, just over 19 away. Those uh, called general oh, generals on a wing B, so they height four or height five? They're height five. Oh. So they can see Juicy. over. Yeah, however, if he did that, his general would be there, but then he'd be surged into next turn by sure. one of the hordes of columns. Sure, and he's not guaranteed. I don't. I don't mm -hmm. think that's bad though, because he's. It'd be a front forced. charge. 
because he'd likely beat this guy up and turn to face, right? Yeah, hex casters are what dash eleven. He gets four, four or five hits and maybe yeah. four wounds. Yeah. And if he doesn't get it, then his general gets reared. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but the generals, I feel like, are what's going to make the difference in this list or this game. So he's he's going to basically have to force him to uh, to make that call. And Gary can also commit in the front right now, yeah. too. And with the pipes, actually, that floor becomes five, right? Yeah, the pipes are yeah. big in that case. Yeah, and if he can engage a, the unit that would be surging in the front, then it can't turn to face. It also pulls a weakness off, which is uh, pretty big in this list. Well, yeah. he would still be able to turn to face. He just withdraws an inch and then completely oh, yeah. does a 180. Yeah. <clears throat> But if he kills the caster, he can either turn back and face, or he can choose to overrun and try and make it more difficult to chase him down. I think you'd be okay with a front charge on it, because if that shouldn't kill it, and then Blake's exposing the rear of his golems to his battle line. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I would try and do, is make that I, I don't think Blake would turn around to charge a general on the front, but he would charge at the rear. Right. We'll see. Uh, I think uh, Garrett, I think that's the only one he can see. I don't think he can see the one with the tome. So he's here. continuing to pick on this mammoth here. Yeah, I think Blake understands and casting weakness on the mammoth is a good idea because um, they can, uh, you know, they can really put a hurt on defense six. Are the mammoths in range of the uh, golems on the far right? No, I think we just checked that. Yeah, okay. they're both out. Right. So it looks like he's using his golem cannons here. Not sure which one's shooting where, but... I think this is the mastiffs right now, uh, where that green is, is, and that purple is the target. Oh, yeah, green uh -huh. Okay, good call. Only two hits. And the Mastiffs, they are piercing, correct? Yeah, pierce one, yeah. I think, just like the uh, dwarf ones. Okay. Looks like some decent damage. Is his captain in range to rally that unit? Yes. So for the massive, it attacks Pierce one. This attacks always the son of four plus. Is was he targeting the far left one, or was he targeting the? He was targeting the far yeah. left one. Right? So it looks like it was just out. Yeah, I thought yeah, so far left. That's a Oh, no, he's very inspiring though. So he's still yeah. inspired, just not rallied. Yeah. Right. So he did seven wounds to that one. That's not bad. So not at all. that's what I meant earlier with like his plink shooting. He'll be able to put a lot of wounds on these units that he's later going to be able to fight or surge and fight and stuff like that. So, yeah. I would have rather seen a little bit more focus fire, though, because like we see there, if that was his nerve roll, that's not going to do anything. Yeah. Seven wounds on a them. fearless unit. I, I don't really like your odds. I didn't get why he shot the mammoth uh, with the weakness, especially because the weakness does wounds as well. So he might have focused that on the fanatics possibly because he was in range. But oh no, he couldn't see the hills in between right. him. Yeah. The yeah, he couldn't shoot it uh, from there at least. But I think so. There's no heal on the other side. So. Yeah. Those fanatics are now just that's yeah. huge. Seven oh, wounds on one of those and almost dead. Well, that unit's now a throwaway, though, too, right? That makes it pretty easy, yeah. an easy choice on what to throw into those Mastiffs. Right. Mm -hmm. And block I mean, the line. It was, it was a throwaway beforehand, kind of like how we said. It's yeah. just now it's guaranteed going to die in one round against a Golem. So are we calling it Thin Chaff or? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely it's, a infantry chaff i mean 
Well, it's a it's a unit strength three chat, which is kind of nifty. They can really be a multitude of things. They can be chaff, or if they hit in a flank, they're a hammer, and they're actually a pretty fighty unit, just straight up. 15 attacks on threes to crush one. So I, I don't know that I even classify them as chaff outside of everything is chaff. Right. Question, does Garrett have range on the general and winged beast on the left flank to fly over 20 and jump behind the grotesques? Because there is no surge. I mean, the individual's there, but he could still be facing the flank. It looks it like it does over. look. No, it's a straight line. Looks like it. Yeah, I don't think he would. He'd have to be within an inch there. He could yeah. come somewhere to like here though. You see or, where my mouth is. Could he and, go right uh, into the grotesque? He could go right into the grotesques for sure. I mean, I mean, right of them, like between the grotesque and the woods. Yeah. Here, the, I don't think. The thing well, is that individual covers. Oh yeah, I guess he could there because well no, because that's where the twenty inches ends is right here. I uh, think he'll I be in sight. A, yeah. And if he's not in sight, I think he's at that point too close to being within one inch of the unit, right? Right. Because he can't land in the woods either. Yeah. Yeah, I think that like kind of has it blocked off, but. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what Garrett's going to do there, but that individual has got that whole like 16 inch radius around it covered really, really well. So it, the general is kind of stuck there. I don't know what he's going to do with it. I'm excited to see what he, what he will do. Is there. anybody enough of a math guy to see if he can actually, what the odds of him beating that half breed champion up on so a one on one? Garrett, Garrett no, did. Andrew. Looks like Garrett is going to take this charge, which. I don't know exactly where why he's positioning it this way because it's an individual, but um, yeah, the individual should turn to so him. So the happy champion will get four hits, crush two with vicious. Yeah, it looks like they're discussing that now. So yeah, so so the general right, he's got seven attacks, seven attacks on threes, hitting on threes, wounding on threes against a half breed champ. So that's what three wounds. Yeah, it's not really enough to reliably beat up the half breed gen. Uh, one thing Garrett could do here, if he wants to get uh, a little tricky on that left hand side, he could move his fanatics up and partially into the woods, um, and then use them as a blocking unit so that his general can fly behind them. And if he has range, hopefully get a toe into the woods, and then he can threaten a flank in the center with that general. Right. I don't think he has. I don't think he's within ten. Yeah, he's not. he's not. Probably not in range, but it's something that possibly could look for setting up maybe next turn as well. Well, I, I bet a beer that we're going to see some units be uh, killed this round. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, first blood, bottom two, coming here. That's a perfect segue into the fact that I'm drinking a uh, Himalayan salted caramel porter by oh. Old Yale Brewing Company. <laughs> Sounds good. It's, it's very good. Salute, wine. <laughs> oh, he's checking to see if they were hindered on the charge there. It looks like they're clear. Um, I think he's touching right there. Oh, so he's, he's got a pivot a little bit. He's yeah. Got a yeah, just a little bit more, it looks like. So then he would have to pivot more? Uh, he might Maybe. Actually... Uh, I think he's probably okay. Yeah, yeah I think he's good. They're going to call it good. It's a good way to put some damage on them because he gets a plus one TC on them. And a throwaway unit. Yeah. Under the charge. More importantly, now he gets to pick up the Siren token if he wants to. Yeah. Yeah. That was one. Does he want to with the fanatic unit? I no, was I think he wants it with the pikes. That that fanatic yeah, unit helps him get there. 
Yeah, the there we go. Yeah. He wants it with the pikes. Oh, they're charging. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I think that's oh, yeah. a better I think that's a better yeah. charge overall because he needs to block up the center here to avoid some of these surge shenanigans that can potentially happen once uh, once that line starts staggering it can really hurt so this is a problem here yeah. though. I guess he's gonna have to sidestep I'm, I'm, actually, I'm surprised he didn't take the other fanatic unit and put it into that obsidian columns with the two uh, tokens but they they can't be surged because they're carrying tokens right now as well right oh Correct. that is true yeah, but and they I don't, should be able to just walk charge right now. Yeah, and I don't yeah, think he wants. Walk. And I don't think he wants to drop those tokens. We've seen what happens when you drop tokens. Yeah, especially with all the players on the board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now he's leader point in here. Yeah. Why didn't he do that last turn? I, I, I don't Not know. Not for sure. You know, he might have just been kind of, like you said, baiting him in. If those were up there, he may not have moved as aggressively with some units. Sure. But I, I think they'll still be in a decent position here. Okay. If he's taking the charge on the half breed, I don't know. I don't know if I like it. So that's where we were. I was just wanting to calculate the odds for that because I wanted to know whether or not he was going to be able to overrun and get a free charge on that unit there. Because he is in position to if he does win that combat. But yeah, and it might that, even right? actually. Do you even take the overrun or do you try to sidestep out of the charge range? Uh, I would take the overrun. I would take the overrun if it's going to get me in the flank. So what is a two plus uh, to get in the is flank? Is it a flank? Yeah. No. It is a flank. Okay. <laughs> then, yeah, I'll take the overrun. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know if it's worth going into the front. No. Uh, the grotesque. But he is uh, very uh, – he has to get some really hot rolls, I think, to, to be able to break that uh, half-free champion. Yeah. I, I don't think he's, av on average, going to be able to do it. No, that's, that's a super aggressive play. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it if his fanatics are in range to charge these grotesques and hold them up. But I don't think they were. No, I don't think so. However, if the grotesques decide to charge the general, the fanatics will be in. Right, but the fanatics, I don't think, win that even if they get the charge. I think no. we're seeing the compounding of the pike being slow and not moving last turn. Because if they were another five inches up this turn, mm -hmm. that yeah. flank would look different. Yeah, I think he would definitely win that flank if he had the pikes over there. Like like you said. So. Yeah, if the pikes were there, then that becomes a, a big so, difference. I wonder what's going to happen... In the next turn also with the gargoyles, the gargoyles are in a very interesting position because that mounted sergeant troop is not in the forest. On the right flank. Oh, interesting. <laughs> there you go, the answer is there. I don't know if he's gonna leave it there. Yeah, I don't know what uh, I think of that either. Uh, you know what, here's what he's doing. He's trying to get into charge and then I bet you he positions the mammoth to flank the dragon if he takes that charge. It does put the gargoyles in the front, but uh, and the gargoyles likely don't do a wound there um, because of the hindered charge. Mm -hmm. Gotta pop the dragon in there. And Actually, then, what I'd really like to see is his uh, mounted uh, sergeants just move forward and block off any charges in front of him. That would be really neat. Which I think That's is what, they're for. what yeah, he might uh, be doing. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to block them off completely with that move. Yeah, he he'll probably, yeah, he'll probably undo it, pivot a little more. Or like I said, maybe he wants him to charge him with the dragon. Right, he's just preventing a double charge now. Yeah. Because that's not a good spot for that dragon to win. Yeah. Now, 
these <laughs> these golems back here to the left of the Overmaster, can they charge the uh, scouts? No. Would he care if the golems charge the scouts? Both mammoths will see him. So, yeah. True. I, I would take that exchange. Oh. Whoa. Oh, that's not a good roll. And those aren't D3s. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Uh, he was attacking with the general. Luckily, he got four hits. It's but a good he... thing he hits on threes. Oh, yeah. on threes, okay. <laughs> he did on four damage. Four off on seven damage. damage. That's great. Right, four damage. <laughs> he did. Uh, ones. <laughs> it's a good good place to put him, actually. Because he didn't didn't have good odds of killing that anyway, so... Yeah, if you're going to roll it, right? Right. right. Now that guy gets flanked, though. Yeah. I'm likely yeah. picked up. So, um, 10 hits. Looks like averages here. And, whoa, 7 wounds. That is huge. Yeah, it's a little over, but that's not too far off. It's 5, usually. Yeah, five's mm -hmm. average. So you're wounding on five. Being reasonable. Yeah, that was a. <laughs> they're wounding on fives because they're crushing one. They're thunder oh, one as oh. well, coming off the hill. And his golems weren't fully on the hill. I think no. they're probably deciding on that right now. They haven't put wounds down. Uh, is. Yeah, he rolled really hot on that wound roll if that was on fours. It's but fours. Because he was on the hill and the golems aren't. Yeah. He would have seven out of ten dice. That's a really good roll. Even five out of ten dice on fives is a good roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes up for the bad roll on his half breed, right? <laughs> I mean, so well, rich. I mean, that's a lot. the four wounds he did on the half breed was uh, it kind of brought it back to average uh, True. in the end. So the thing is, though, what is that item on that golem horde? Um, it says one slash CHX. That's the yeah. Charnox upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, he has so, heal six. Uh, they didn't put the, they didn't give so him. They thunderous. didn't add the thunderous yeah. charge there. Yeah. They used five wounds there. Yeah. Interesting. Is that is that Golem Horde fully on the hill? Can you click that infinity button? I don't want to know why. No, we don't get access to it. But they, when I looked at it before, the Golem Horde wasn't a majority on the hill. They're not on the hill, yeah. Yeah. So you should have gotten that thunderous. Yeah. And that's what we think, yeah. Well, there's some dead mastiffs. Poor dogs. Oh, did he mess up his pivot by putting the captain there? And he can't pivot to get those golems out of his flank? Yeah. But you can sidestep, right? That's what he's going yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's that's not more. Pretty far. Uh, the, the mess. The other Mastiffs are on the way, but they're going to be dead, so he still has a chance to maybe block the side charge with the Fanatics with Regiment. Overrun, yeah. He's going to be dead anyway. Right. Yeah, you um, don't want the Golems in the flank of that unit, though. I wonder if you could pivot him past the Captain. Yeah, but, but you're Possibly. taking away the options against the uh, General in the back by doing that. Like He has four Golems at this point in time. Mm -hmm. he can only deal well, with I pivot a little, though. At least sidestep. Definitely sidestep. He hasn't side step. started rolling dice yet, has he? Or something else? No, I don't no. think he has. I think he's deciding what he wants yeah. to do here. I think he needs, what, two inches to put the other golems in the center? Yeah, it looks like it. No, it looks like they're, he's going to stay put. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure. I wonder if he could have pivoted them farther, like past the captain, to get everything in the front. Um, I think he's. Uh, I don't think he wants to do that, even if he could, because of the surge stuff that could happen with golems into a flank. It probably be. I don't think he could protect it. 
Yeah. Oof. Another dead dog unit. You know what he does? He just runs forward here because you don't have to stop an inch away. You see? Right. Yeah. Right right up to him. To help right up on there. Yeah, that's some clock. As it. expected, he killed the dogs with the fanatics. <laughs> so now he needs a big overrun. No, not uh, that far. Two, two inches. Two. Two and two or three inches. Yeah. Two. Yeah. <clears throat> no, the. Yes, he did. I don't know what. The, oh wait, did he waver the dogs? He rolled a ten for their nerve check. Yeah. He rolled a four first on a first roll, so they're uh, aren't no, they thirteen fifteen? Yeah. No, they aren't the uh, dwarven hunting pack. What's their what's their um? They're ten twelve. They're ten twelve. What's yeah. their defense though? But he only yeah. did six wounds. Their defense, defense four, two. Right? Defense so two. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah, fourteen. Yeah, he killed them. Yeah. Okay. I'm really confused. Yeah, I'm pretty confused by this. I don't too. know why you would give that flank on your horde. Does he, does he think that he can't? Okay. Oh, here we go. Maybe he was just looking at stuff. Yeah. It's possible also that he was maybe seeing if he could, if he pivoted that way, whether or not there was no way that this guy could wheel to get in the flank. But I just don't see how that's not possible. I think right. he needs to go forward. Uh, I guess he doesn't think so. Maybe he didn't see it. Let's write that down. Later. Although, actually, no, 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 because he can't make that pivot because of the general on the back. Oh, but he, he can move forward. Indeed. He yeah, can yeah, still move forward. forward and do it. Enough to do it, though, without yeah, the unit in yeah. the pivot? Yeah. It looks can. like it'd be possible. Uh, he obviously doesn't agree with us. Oh, wow. Four oh, eight, <laughs> Three no, wounds. Three wounds is about reasonable. Anyway. And brutal. And, and brutal. Three. So he needs a seven twice to kill this guy. Well, that gives like a choice. Then do you get the general on beast or flank charge the bike? Got it once. Oh, oh, got it oh, twice. Oh, waver. That's a waver, isn't it? No, no. they're at dash 11. Oh, okay. Awesome. And he, and he is brutal, too, so he, he actually hit a 12. Yeah, I, I thought they were like an 11-13 or something. Interesting. Well, that makes things very interesting for Blake. I'm wondering what's going through Blake's head at this moment. So if you're Blake, now what? Yeah, that's I take that bike. <laughs> if I can. <laughs> so I think Garrett... <laughs> Needs to make sure he can keep the uh, rightmost unit in his front from a surge. Uh, but I guess he doesn't think so. Because <laughs> right now you're not you're not really worried about. Well, I guess the golems could drop the tokens and surge and pick them up in the same turn. Well, the one on the right is going to get a flank. The one right, right next to the next caster inside of that height zero, height one terrain. By the way, what do you guys play that normally? Do you play that as height zero, height one, the lake and the... Um, it came up the other day in one of my games. Uh, you used zero. to play this as height zero, yeah. height one? What does uh, that mean? Play it as flat. flat. So you only get cover if you're majority <laughs> at the terrain. Okay. The most recent in FAQ, height zero and flat are the same thing. Yeah. They were just checking on the hill for something, I think. I think they spotted it. charge. He yeah. took the damage off the golems. I think he's putting seven on them. It was a seven. He can roll nerve on that unit. Did he roll nerve on that before? He did. He, he rolled five, eight. I don't think. Oh, yeah, the double sixes would have done it. Oh, wow, he almost broke that unit then. Mm -hmm. uh, he may have just, it may be that the marker is underneath this unit. And I don't think oh, they were inspired yeah. even. No, no, it does not appear so. That would have been surprising. <laughs> 
to say the least. So is he not taking that flank charge there? That's interesting. He is, okay. I was like, wow. <laughs> somebody gift wrap something like that for you. <laughs> Garrett's just setting up for the amazing snake eyes and rear charge for fanatics. <laughs> but I do believe we get the first blood from the uh, second turn. We do. So yeah. you, you bet a beer. So does that mean I have to go get another beer? <laughs> I think I have to go get another beer too. <laughs> I haven't had my first one yet. So I guess the question is, how many uh, units will Blake take out in response? I think the general's gone, fanatics are gone. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the pikes because he's going to hit them in the flank. That's 18. Yeah, okay, but they're done. <laughs> you <laughs> talked yourself into that one, huh? <laughs> you really? Because 36, right? That's, well, that's 18 hits. That's not too well, I guess that is 18 hits with like 10. 18 like hitched, turns. wounding on twos with vicious. Yeah. That's 17. Yeah. yeah. And then no oh. one's in the front, finish him off. That's yeah. three units. I, I'm going to guess there's three units of uh, Garrett's on this turn. I think he's going to lose two generals and the pikes and the seven wounded fanatics. So I'm going to say he's going to lose four this turn. See, I just don't get the not even trying to sidestep here. Yeah, that really I don't know what the uh, thought process there was. Yeah. Can we screen capture this one for end of game discussion? And the mammoths aren't even positioned to take right. advantage of the things in the flank. I don't like how he pivoted them. Yeah, he's definitely valuing this right flank. Uh, winning out against the uh, the speed pieces over here. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, he doesn't even need that weakness any really from that hex caster because most of the units he's fighting don't even have crushing. But even then, it would come in useful because you would if you would be wounding on sixes. I mean, how would how would that work if you're naturally wounding on sixes? You now can't you wound. Would you have your attacks the way shooting units do it? Like I've never actually encountered. No, I don't think so. No, it's actually in the rule book. Sixes that... always wound, yeah. No, sixes don't always wound. Oh. So That's if you cool. weakness a unit that doesn't have inherent crushing or thunderous charge, they physically cannot wound you. No way. Yep. So that's oh, why right. hex casters and golems are just disgusting combo. That is disgusting. Of course, one though. Man, I thought you could always wound on sixes. Nope. Yeah, I thought you could. yeah, I thought there was a rule that said you always wound on sixes. Nope, you're thinking of Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll uh, I'll find the uh, specific section in the rule book. Something about like a natural unmodified six or something like that, but. I think that might be text that you want to add to weakness, not in an errata to the spell itself. Um, I don't even think it's in. Uh, no, under weakness, actually, it says instead of causing damage, if one or more hits are scored, the target unit has a minus one modifier when rolling the damage enemy units during their next turn. Any rolls the unit makes of a natural six will still cause damage, however. Oh, so it says in weakness. Okay. <clears throat> I'll find I that. Seem weird. Hit damage. But, but even with that, like the pike board hits on four with 30 attacks, that's 15. They only got to do two and a half wounds against those golems. Yeah, they're not the ones that are beating up golems in this yeah. area. The, there's going to be a, a, an epic grind fest in the center uh, between. Well, it's not going to be that grindy if that unit comes in the flank. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's not no, like no, those uh, no. those berserkers grind. But right now, I see it seven wounds and then the heal. 
yeah, there's not there's not much that's going to happen other Actually, than the golems but, going to the flank. Yeah, the healer has the yeah. surge. So. Maybe not. Well, no, because the other one has a tone. Oh, yeah. So, so oh, all he, he needs to do is move that right one. Sorry, From the ahead. way he's moving here, it looks like he thinks that's front. Yeah. And I don't know why they would think that. That is God. very obviously flank. But with that, he pivoted over the general. Yeah, which he can't do. Right. Um, so while they're figuring that out, I did find the uh, text. So on page 27 of the large rule book, um, this is specifically for shooting. I can look for the melee as well, but it's uh, under the section of damaging the target. The last paragraph says, any die that roll a one always fail to damage regardless of modifiers. If a modifier brings the score required uh, to damage a, a target above six, the target cannot be damaged. Oh. Okay, but it's so it does change that under weakness. Yeah, which I don't think yeah, there's any it's modifier it's besides weakness. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. For yeah, but and maybe that's future proofing. Yeah, and melee in the melee phase, it says uh, the damaging targets exactly as page twenty-seven. So it uses the same rules. Yep. So I don't know. I don't know why. Probably because they <laughs> saw the. Uh, oh wow, that that was in the flank. Hmm. That was certainly in the flank. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's why they discussed it. Probably to talk but about even it. So I don't get how this golem gets to come in the front. Yeah, but he can't throw off the ears in there. I guess they're yeah. considering, so they must be considering it that uh, this unit here was left with no option to charge. But no, it could have it easily could have charged the, the fanatics. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't get this one at all, especially since he did pivot through the general to get even get there. Right. Yeah, and stunned. I, I do find it amusing that everyone's kind of in agreement that he could probably have had the golems and the dragon into the flank of the pike. Right. Yeah. Which would be massive overkill. My guess this other, just to keep things honest, this other golem unit charges this fanatics unit too. The guess is he probably, maybe Blake thought the he would like the Overmaster into the flank and he didn't even check on the Golem Horde being in the flank or not. That's also a possibility. The thing with yeah, it is... I don't, like, I don't see Blake not correcting him on... Sorry, I don't see Garrett not correcting him on that though either. Sure. Yeah, Garrett seems to be Maybe didn't check. Yeah, I don't get it. The, the thing is though, one thing I don't like about... Um, token holding units as them being in combat, even though they might kill that unit right away right now, which there's a chance they might not. If that if that dragon flubs because of the ensnare, the golems are not going to do much right now. So if that dragon flubs, there's a really good yeah, chance. Right. There's a really good chance that Pike Court will last right now. Actually, I mean, let's do the math real quick. What do we got? Thirty six right. attacks from the golems on fives. 24, 24 hits, wounding on two. No. 12 hits. You have minus one hit because of ensnare because it's in the front. So 12 hits. But, but 12 more hits from the. 12 hit. right. Yeah, it's probably 11 wounds, though, right? Yeah. The the golems themselves, on average, do 11 and a half. Yeah, or that's 11 not a, for sure kill all. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be close to a seven. And if the dragon doesn't roll well, it might actually be really in favor of the pipes. Yeah. I mean, Average though the drag. And here comes the position. For the <laughs> yeah. 
So average is the dragon on 18 attacks hitting on threes is going to hit, what, 12 of those? 12. And wounding on twos. And he has vicious as well. So vicious on that on top of it, sure, yeah. They're probably going to go through it. Averages says everything combined, these pike hordes are looking at 23 wounds. Good for snakes. <laughs> Perfect for snakes. Now, with the way that they're positioned here, the mammoths might actually have front arc on the uh, uh, the one that has two tokens on it. Uh, they're both in the flank. Yeah, but are the mammoths able to see them? Oh yeah, they both can totally see there. I was checking it earlier. Oh, uh -huh. he's gonna charge one of them. It looks like, or if he's not gonna, no, he couldn't. Yeah, I guess you yeah. could see that one. He would have to charge. He would have to charge, otherwise it doesn't do anything. Yeah, the man is towed into the woods, so he could see him. Yep. One no, thing I'm sorry, uh, if the pike had sidestepped to the left, the overmaster wouldn't have been able to hit either, right? Uh, only if both the pikes sidestep to the left and then the fanatics sidestep to the right. Yeah. Yeah. Or or if he got a three on his D three. I Even think that then. might have done it. Yeah, that would have just done it. I still understand why he didn't get so. Maybe he was afraid of the Golems in the far left flanking him if he sidestepped. No, I don't know. With the fanatics there, really that's not really tough. Yeah, thing. it wouldn't have been possible. So he hasn't cast any. Really no. I don't know. He hasn't cast any dice yet, but he, he places Golems to go into the flank of the general. Yeah. And I'm I'm interested to see what happens with the mammoths. He will be hindered. He's still in there. Bye bye, Toe. Yeah. We'll get. We'll get to see shooting before combat there. It's true. So he is bringing them in there, it looks like. I think. I don't think. Okay. My, uh, the mammoth can disengage and, and be still that there, there, yeah. cherry thing. It's not, it's not going to pin him down. Yeah, even backing up an and it doesn't matter at all. Well, yeah. And it, the way the other mammoth is, he can't call the center. Yeah, it kind of limits the options still. I don't think he can take both mammoths into the same unit now with that charge. Yeah. Maybe. Because this mammoth that was just charged is going to have to end its charge further to the right. And I don't know if it's going to be able well, to squeak by. But if he's blank, if he's in the blank, and then the one on the left will go in the bottom or further forward. Which would allow them to do it. I don't know because this. Uh, because then they're crossing. Would have to be the top, right? Yep. So then this guy has to go to the bottom. Yeah, because you draw the line, right? Right. The one okay. on the left will go to the bottom. Oh yeah, this one would go to the bottom because it's drawn from here, yeah. right? Because I'm out the way. And you draw the line across. Yeah. Yep. Excuse, uh, sorry, I guess I don't understand that. Can you explain so what that you again? Do is you draw like a line, imaginary line like this coming off, and then you push it in this direction and see what it hits first. So when you draw an imaginary line here and then push it straight up, it's going to touch this one first before it touches this one. So it doesn't that swing? This one goes to the bottom. It doesn't swing. Just do it with a 12-inch ruler, Dan. It's easier to show it. Yeah, but I can't really show it without showing them. I so mean, can't pull. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. No, I just I didn't you. understand that was actually the rule. I thought it was similar to, like, if you're charging the front, my understanding is it's their leader point to your leader point, and you just line them up furthest left to furthest right. I don't know, let me bring it right up in the rule book, but I'm pretty sure that it's like a line. Yeah, and they, a line. they show in the book, they do draw like a line yeah whichever so, leader point it hits first that's the one that goes on that side 
What are the odds of the uh, golems killing the general, the winged general? In the fight? Uh, since he didn't shoot first, not that great. Yeah, that's interesting to me. Why didn't he? 36 on five? Because he needs fives. Close. Yeah, but why not it? shoot? That's a what's the point of, What's the point of not shooting? There, yeah, there's no point to not shoot. Unless that's his shooting. Maybe. Must be. Maybe. No. Uh, no. Yep. Yeah, it was. It was. Okay. Okay. Yep. That makes much more sense. Still not great chances. That's 12 hits and... But that one wound is like They're adding two or like on that. I mean, I don't know. I kind of like his chances. <laughs> what do you at guys least, think at of least the, the waiver? Yeah. What do you guys think of the half breed diversion on this on yeah, the left no flank by not going in? Um, I kind of like amazing. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Didn't need him anymore. Yeah, so if it's particularly close and hard to determine, use a straight line perpendicular from the target, moving it left and right and see which leader point the line touches first. So that's what he's rolling right now. What page? Uh, this is page 22. It's the last paragraph on multiple charges against the same target. So which combat is this? Thirty-six. That's. Oh, did I get both of these guys roll together. One of the golems. Or Wait, this one here, maybe. Could, could be this one here too. Get on three. Get twenty-one hit. That's a grotesque. It's a grotesque. Oh, uh, they're, they're, they're hitting on threes. Yeah. Golems yeah. on fours. As expected. Yeah. So are you outside, Ryan? Is that why it's so dark? No, I'm inside. I'm Everybody's in the, uh, in the kids' room because everybody's in the front room. And two kids and a bird and a TV would be a lot of background noise. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> This hasn't been one of Garrett's best games so far. He needs to wake up a little bit. Yeah, he's missed a lot of stuff. I mean, he's still not in a horrible spot, but... Well, once we pick up the units that die this turn, then it's going to look a little bit more grim, I think. Yeah. Did five damage? He did one wound over here. Surgeon destroy. I I don't know what he's doing here. Uh now he's doing this combat. They were just doing the gargoyles combat, it looks like. Oh, okay. Yeah, this good. Good roll. So, uh fourteen, yeah. Not bad. On twos and then rerolling. Or on threes, right? Against five. Um, 12. Is that 12 wounds on him? Yes. That's enough. That's dead. 14. Enough. He's vicious. Yeah, he he popped the general. He did. Yep. 14 damage. So he was on snakes. Now, did he screw his reform up by putting his extra there? <laughs> Quite likely here, yes. Not too much. No, I think he Not wanted to bad. face out that way. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. He rolled kind of hot on the on the hits. 14 yeah. out of 36. Yeah. Could have had yeah. 12 on average, but that's yeah. kind of in... That's Plus in minus two, so we would look you up with one. All right. Vicious, really oh, no, you're on the one on the left. 
So eight yeah. wounds there against the seven it's wounded fanatics. Yeah, you're gone. That'll do it. All right, and this is also the top of three. Oh, oh they they did adjust for the wounds. Um, with yeah, they did. Yeah, they put seven Good. wounds on those all. So do you charge them with the pikemen? No. Maybe. Are they even in range? They're only ten inches, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're not in range. No, those pikes aren't going to be in range of anything this turn. This is not little hits. Right. Right. Average. Fall hits. That was he perfect average. He's looking fall. Yeah. Twelve wounds. Right. Twelve wounds. Yeah. Just like we said. Yeah. <laughs> now the flank. Ooh, 15 hits. That's Not probably going to do it. Because with Vicious, I don't think he's going to miss enough. Yeah, there's already 13. That's already snakes. Yep. Oh, Garrett needs it. Snakes twice. Kind of bad for him. One How more he time. reforms with these guys will be keto. There. Yep. Well, when he's rolling nines and tens and only needs snake eyes, he's uh, just overkilling this. Wasting <laughs> all those good nerve rolls. Yeah. yeah. He'll come back to bite him later. Because dice right. work like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, who yeah, do you I give that... Like here. Hit, hit with that unit? The dragon in the front. Who do you give that token to here? Do you go all in on the one unit of golems, or do you spread it out? I think you go all in. Especially since there's very little threatening that one now, right now. Well, actually, I, no, I would put it on the one on the left. Is it yeah. safe on the man? I, I would say with golems, you want to go separate because they're slow charge range anyway. But you're uh -huh. limiting them. They now both can't surge if you do that. That's true. That yeah, is the true. One on the right. Possible by mammoths. Yeah, but if it does, he has units there to kind of counter that. How did this right. unit only back up point four? Is it because of the hex caster right behind him? No, he could have easily gone back and at least another point one inch. Yeah, I don't understand. Maybe they're playing a different game than we play. I'm going to be fully honest. Most of these cats that I'm on, I feel like they all play a different game than I play. <laughs> and that's because I'm just not that good. So, The thing with four golem hordes and two hex casters is that even if you have a really good alpha strike army, if you have chaff in front of those golems, it's very difficult to take one out in a turn, and he's got enough heal to get back three, four wounds. That's what I meant earlier with a really heinous list. The thing so is... He's not facing long-range shooting. Against long-range shooting, the list is not that great. But not facing any shooting, it's amazing. Yeah. So Especially here, this is really odd, I don't think. Because yeah. I don't think they actually have the choice to not take the token. Yeah, so but I wonder if Garrett somewhere. chose not to pick up the token. Oh, that could be. That makes sense. Yeah, probably because he saw himself in a dying position. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't see how that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Sometimes you make mistakes in the game too. I've had it the other day with a uh, in a game too, where you know I've made an obvious mistake and we have to so we have to go back. Backing up this unit, I think he just put this one. He did. He put the flank in the uh, wing beasts arc because it was out before. Yeah, and I think he still has the flank with the five wounded mammoth. Yeah. So, uh, but are they both going to be able to fit it? Fanatics come in here. Uh, they could have done both of those first, and then the fanatics. Could have. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he can do those before the fanatics. Oh, he is just double charging. So this is all making. Interesting. Okay. 
I guess it does kind of solidify a right flank for him here. Please tell me he takes the flank. Otherwise, I will just have to drown my sorrows here. Maybe, well, I mean, maybe, I have to do it anyway, so. <laughs> maybe he'll take the flank of the gargoyles, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> he just really I, wants them dead. I think I'd have to find the whiskey at that point. <laughs> did he weak this guy again? I don't think he did. Because he surged, he, right? Uh, no, he surged with his, uh, um, his, what, what are they called? The, yeah, the iron caster. Yeah. And then he did weakness because that mammoth only had four wounds at the beginning of the turn. Oh, okay. I still think you charge, even if you're only wounding on threes. Well, threes is still pretty damn good, especially on flank. Yeah. You're not going to get many flanks now that you've kind of lost that not much. Yeah. I think that another good option would be charging the seven wounded unit with the other fanatics here. Yeah. He has a decent shot of actually popping that unit because I don't think they're in inspired. Are they inspired by... They are not. But with that X? No. No. It's a perfect time to go grab them right now. Yeah, I think he has to set that up. And it looks like Garrett's game plan is to maybe try to win the grind on the left-hand side over the remainder of the game against these grotesques. Oh, here comes the yes. Man with that strider. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, this one for you. Yeah. I'm just surprised that the winged beast didn't go in there, too. Although, yeah, that definitely wouldn't fit. Uh, the yeah. Yeah. But you, as you're right, the, the Beast could have gone in first and then the Fanatics. And then the Fanatics would have pushed over more and made room. I think Not Garrett may be a little bit on tilt right now. But this is, uh, this is good. Yeah. He's coming here. Yeah, you know, if he's able to pick up, right, he's going into the seven wounded unit. If he's able to pick up that unit, and then yeah. um, I think this mammoth in the back here tied up by the gargoyles, I think him killing the gargoyles this turn and then just turning to threaten the center is actually going to put him in a good position um, just because he he's really kind of set up to where um, uh, he – What's it called? Blake's going to have to essentially split his forces and go back to back because Garrett's kind of doing a uh, pincer maneuver. Yeah, I think this uh, Fanatics unit, when it wins combat here, if it does anyways, uh, can pivot to get out of line of sight of this Golem unit hmm. uh, and potentially create some kind of a pincer here. So we'll see how that goes. I did not realize that Garrett was Hannibal. Doing the double envelopment here. Yeah. Well, he was playing the uh, his uh, back in last edition of Barnger. He was the one that had the hobgoblin ones that were almost all like an all hunt army. They were all the uh, nimble cav units. Okay. So he does tend to like that style. Yeah. Now I don't really care for the positioning on the uh, spear phalanx horde. He's not able to see the grotesques, which puts a lot of pressure on that fanatics unit to overperform. Right. I mean, I think that, I mean, his fanatics just aren't going to win that over the long term. But I felt like he needed to have his uh, spear phalanx unit to be able to um, at least threaten a charge if they break this next turn. Right, but I feel like Garrett feels like he's got a lot of pressure in the center. Like, there's no way he can extract these tokens if he doesn't bring more meat into the grinder. And the other issue is the fanatics are not inspired or rallied at this point in time. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, 
I didn't see this till just now, but the uh, captain did go into the front of the uh, golems. Yeah, there. that is interesting. Oh. I think that's worth it. Well, he's got to get the extra one or two wounds. Mana still have Brutal, too, don't they? They do. Yeah, that's actually an interesting combat. 24 attacks on fours. Yeah, it's swingy. I don't think he picks up the unit this turn. But he definitely sets it, um, sets it's it up for a kill too next turn. Thunderous too. Holy cow! Yes, but it is weakness or weakened yeah. right now. So yeah, three. And, and the golems won't be able to disengage either. They can't surge, do anything funky that way. Yeah. So he's fighting this one up here against the gargoyles here first. I think Ryan's back, waiting for. Oh, I didn't even realize he dropped. <laughs> Welcome back, Ryan. Hey there, guys. Sorry, my off for a second. Is the drop on the flank of the spear phalanx? Sorry, what? Uh, no, I don't believe so. The okay. spears. Um, what? What is their arc? Yeah. yeah, that's why he positioned it that way to keep yeah. the dragon in the front. Okay. So, I don't remember him casting weakness on the mana boss turn. The mana should the mana should not be weak. Uh, he did. He went he back. He went back after um, after initially starting combat with the grotesques and did one wound with weakness against oh. the mana. Because the hex cast or the uh, it was the iron caster that cast surge. Oh, 14 hits, a bit of an overperformance there. 12 wounds. 12 damage on three. Uh, now if the captain gets one or two, that, that might get to snake eyes. Yeah, that's that's going to be big. Mm -hmm. 12 wounds. Man, that was that was a huge overperformance there. And brutal. So yeah. right now he's on fours twice. If captain does one. Are they 18? There's 17. They're not oh, the Earth Elementals. And with. Oh. With. Well. Wow. When so here. Once, twice. Got him. Who needs the captain anyway? Oh, now Mammoth with two tokens. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big swing. Yeah, that's huge. Looking oh, down. Did Blake not pick up that token that the middle I, don't think, I think the idea was that Garrett didn't pick it up the turn before when he yeah. turned. Oh, okay. Yeah, otherwise Blake would have had to pick it up. Ooh, and a three inch backup. Brilliant. It makes those uh, a lot of the Sir Janigans uh, a little bit harder to pull off. Yeah, I think they might actually be impossible because the captain is the captain mighty. He is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's going to get over to this right flank. And look at he's going to pivot to. I don't know if that pivot actually gets him out technically. He's overhanging it by just a little bit. But I'm guessing they're discussing it. I would have thought he would have gone forward instead. Yeah. But I guess that dragon's really got the, the manticore. The winged beast has got something else to do. Let's be honest. He's probably not going to be going to beat up on captains. I, I don't even know if he kills the captain. <laughs> it's true. He's, uh, he's no slow. Uh, oh, he, he is running for it. Okay. It's kind of what I figured was going to happen, but. If I was Garrett, I'd be really happy if that dragon hit my captain. Yeah, yeah, me too. Instead of the flank of this fanatics regiment, although it's that that hopefully that regiment's facing forward um, yeah. this way. Yeah, I think that's the next big uh, combat here. He just needs yeah. one good nerve roll against it, and you know maybe he does seven wounds again. So here we go. Well, it's got the two three again too, right? So ten hits, averages. Four. It's number five would be a good. Uh, four, four ones this time. Four so eleven. Six. So he needs a six, six one time. 
Just one time. He got, got him. it. And he rolled twice for good measure. Good measure. <laughs> So good. Wow. Yeah, this is a big turn. Game. Garrett's looking pretty good right now. And, uh, these are the games you like to watch. Man, it's been bloody. Oh, I guess I should be uh, keeping track of turn here, too, and doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I think is interesting was uh, Blake's <laughs> choice to not heal those uh, golems. Yeah. He had he had the option to, instead of casting weakness on the um, mammoth, to use that caster for surge and then heal six against the golems that have seven wounds uh, and put them in inspiring range probably too. But uh, uh, he, he gave it away being, a big confidence. Hindsight being 2020, right? Uh, you're hoping that that mammoth doesn't overperform like it did with the uh, <laughs> it wounds. And that that weakness makes a difference. Yeah, and I think that Blake had options in his um, reforms last turn to what avoid that. On that three, one second, because he just rolled an eleven for nerve. Did that just waver them? Um, Fifteen. Um, They're yeah. sixteen, eighteen. Oh, wow. Yep, sucks sixteen, eighteen. See, yeah, sucks to see those super high nerve rolls go to waste. Are they 16, 18, the grotesque? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But they have Fury, no? No, they don't. Oh, they do not. Woo -hoo -hoo. This is huge. It, no, he didn't waver them. But That's he didn't. Yeah. Oh, he didn't one waver them. He missed yeah. the one. Fifteen. Yeah. Oh, they're one over. Yep. So close. Uh, and the regen on them right now is going to kick in too. Yeah. The grotesque oh, was, get back the combat. It was just uh, out of the box, like hot and herbal anyway, right? So what was that, Ryan? Did he already fight the combat with the fanatics and the general into those balls? Uh, no, I don't right. Don't think he has yet. Oh, maybe? Because there was only uh, three wounds on them. But the I with the three wounds on them, he walked with. Oh, yeah, that's what he started yeah. with. That's yeah, he right. Must have it. That was the first combat. So, um, wow. Welcome to Kings of War. When it's your turn, you're winning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, but he didn't kill the gargoyles. No, he didn't. Uh, I he don't even think he wavered them. Oh, my goodness. He hasn't rolled nerve yet. Oh, I think he. I, don't think he's really nerve nerve. Yeah. I think he did roll, roll nerve on the guard trials. Yeah, because that was like one of the first combats done. Oh, uh, okay. I just saw him put the four there now. I really um, I was moving it around. So I do believe okay. it is Caleb's turn to uh, his side. Uh, Blake's turn. Uh, I think. Just want to check. Here we go. Yeah, I think it is. That's what's market. Maybe a restroom break. Movement. Sounds like a perfect time to go get a beer. I'll be right back. Yeah. I made a mistake to do that earlier on when there was a whole lot of action going on. I missed him killing the abyssal uh, golem horde in the center with the fanatics regiment. Like I totally missed that. The one with the seven wounds. Yeah. I was excited to watch that. Now it came back and I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, he, he only did four wounds, but he rolled the six nerve that he needed because they weren't inspired. So, but He had he had ample chance to put him in his spine rage right there with the center iron caster, didn't he? The one with the shroud? Yeah, I, I think it was just an oversight on Blake's part. Too bad, yeah. That should, I think that should have lived, actually. Interestingly, what do you guys think about the half-breed champion... Is he, he has four wounds on him. I didn't see from what, but is he going to go into the uh, the spear felling sword, the, the pikes? Or um, can he survive that? Or does he have better things to do? I think he goes into the fanatics. To make sure it's dead. Make sure it's dead. Yeah. yeah. I, 
I think that if he chooses to uh, go after the spear phalanx, I don't think he charges. Since he's mighty, the phalanx can't go by him. If you go technical and real right, like, would he be hindered if he goes into the fanatics because it's a rear? Would he go uh, through the forest? Um, I don't think so because you pivot as little as possible to complete the charge. Okay. And it's so, closest, closest to there. If you're Garrett, you've got four out of five tokens and two of them on your opponent's half of the board. Do you just start backing up the pikes and kind of being defensive? And I think push the pikes the into the backfield. I think the pikes are right where he wants them right now, uh, in a forest. So everything that's going in at this point is going to be on sixes, unless they hit on threes. No, look at this. Mm -hmm. The general and these guys. Interesting choice. Is he going to rely on the dragon and the character to take out the um, fanatics here? Um, oh, looks like he's just going with the good columns by himself. Not a bad choice, actually. She yeah. like that. It's not fight. Yeah, that's not bad at all. So... I think Garrett's okay with this as long as his fanatics hold out this turn. Yeah, it is an act, though, right? That's uh, that's a decent amount of attacks being put in, right? Six attacks on the half breed champion. Yeah, nine, with the half breed. Yeah. At nine, with the wing half breed. <laughs> all on threes, all on threes and twos, right? So, 15 attacks. So just some regenerals there across the board. Got one back on the gargoyles. I think he has to go into the fanatics with his overmaster. Do you think so? Why? Because he needs to pick that unit up. Yeah, uh, right now, if he doesn't pick it up, it's threatening the flank of his golems. I think the golems have to go in the general. It's true. They could counter the general. But if yeah. they do so, does that put the uh, fanatic unit right next to him in his flank? Well, not to mention, right, the next turn. Because that, that half three champion's got four wounds on him. What happens then if the if it's just the half breed champion, the fanatics can't like uh, counter charge him, turn to face, right? Yeah. And then they, an individual overrun to get a free rear charge on these golems. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not a guarantee, so we'll see if Garrett wow. uh, yeah. sees that. If if okay, it I, don't I don't think I put the half breed champ in there just because of that. That's right. real risky. He doesn't kill him. I probably would have put I, not put him in the, I probably would have put him into the that's a good, uh, that's left a good season I, I was originally thinking with the grotesque because who I'd put them in with just to keep the inspiring there and add the extra hits. But. Right, because you could more reliably kill that fanatic unit in one turn with the character in against the leftmost fanatics. What I don't like about the general and the fanatics is if you don't kill them, the mammoth has you. So now that right. he's pinned up this fanatics, is charging the general here the, the best choice? Because it's putting these fanatics in the flank. Right. I don't really care for this. No. I, I think if you weren't tying up the middle fanatics, yeah. that would be the right call. But... Um, weakness. I'm I think this is weakness. He has heal six right now. Oh, okay. Weakness on the fanatics. I hope. Or he kept weakness on to the mammoth. I know we're. Yeah, that's my mammoth. But he missed. 
Yeah, I would have rather seen it on the Fanatics. Does Mammoth even have range on the Overmaster? He does have range on the, uh, on the Overmaster. As long as he drops the tokens, he will. That... Oh, yeah, he's only speed 5 with him. That's right. <laughs> but Garrett but has the perfect the unit guy. to go pick up the tokens <laughs> sitting right there. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah, there's another man and there's some mounted guys. So, yeah, there's no qualms dropping it. That is not what Garrett wanted. Which combat is Oh, that's over here. Okay. Yeah. Or, yeah, so now those pikes are in trouble. And they're overrunning? Yeah. Uh, just to make it ne next to impossible. I'm to, the... Yeah, but if Garrett survives, oh, if he backs up to get both units in his front, um, his pikes are going to last a long time. They're speed five, so he can go to three inch and then another two and a half. Is yeah. that even going to get them both in the front? No, that's not going to do anything from the looks of it. He has to hope that his fanatics in the middle survive and then kill the half breed and overrun into the rear of those guys and then counter and then counter with the pike as well. That's Whoa, a six guy. hits. Where is he going? Uh, against the spears. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. So he did six wounds. That was pretty good hitting on yeah, sixes. You know, shouldn't he? Oh, yeah, hitting you know, on sixes. Yeah, yeah Ender, and uh, and Snare. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Must be doing this one now. No, I think it looks like he's rolling both these together, I guess. 18. Yeah, it would no, be against the general, wouldn't it? Yeah. It ought to be over here, yeah. But I don't know why he hit on fives. Are you on a counter charge? Yeah, he yeah. should be hitting on fours. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of weirdness in this game. No, that's over here. No, that's I was at 18 attacks. What are they? Yeah. Did he just triple the attacks from the half? Oh, maybe he added them together? Oh. No, because they're um, only... Oh, he rolled an extra nine. nine. Uh, he rolled 18 and then... And then yeah, eight. but 18, he could have been not, six attacks, not 18. He tripled the attack from the half breed champ. But I, I think you rolled eight but, and then a separate nine to make twenty seven. It looks oh, like what he did. Right no, it looks like what he did. He accidentally rolled eighteen dice, so okay. then he chose okay. he rolled six. six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he hit five of those six, rolled for vicious. Yep. So he did five wounds. So that that adds up. No, I don't think it does. Because if it was six attacks, that would only be two hits, right? For two wounds. But he marked him with five. So, five hits from the... No, uh, five hits from the three. Yeah, of the six attacks um, from the rear, he hit five times. Because he rolled a one, three, four, four, six, six. Then he rolled a wound. He had one, one, so he re-rolled oh. it with Vicious. Okay, well, he didn't break those fanatics. He rolled a three for nerve. There we go. The dream's that alive, boys. Massive. <laughs> that is such a massive... That, that <laughs> makes this half-breed being such a... He only, only needs a two-inch overrun. It's like a two-inch? Yeah, two-inch. I think it's a two, two inches in him. This game is just a punching match at this point in time. Like each round. Yeah. Uh, that's big. That's a 12 hit swing against the general. Nine wounds. Ten wounds. Ouch. He's what, 14, 16? 15, 17. Okay. And that's a dead general. Oh. Wow. Well, 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 well. 
Now, I didn't see, did he heal all of the wounds off of that unit of golems? He must, uh, he must have, otherwise it's a trip pat pinned underneath it. I that might have been... That might have been some of the dice that were rolled before the combat on the left that we were wondering what it was. Yeah. So do you accept the uh, mounted scouts to the flank? Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially if they be, be in there to position them in the right way. Because if the mount, mounted scouts come into the flank, um, you're Most actually sure. happy with that because they're not going and getting the tokens. Oh, right, because the man right. is going to charge the rear of this guy. <laughs> right. So right, right. right now, Garrett's in position to win the left flank if everything wait, wait, goes wait, wait, well wait. for him so this turn. Didn't move this unit at all? Like, what's going on in this game? <laughs> we don't. We don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> we should ask them how many drinks they had. <laughs> That's the game like he's rolling. Drinks. He's rolling a dice now for something. Oh yeah, he's about stepping him or back. Maybe that's a sidestep. There it is. Okay. Everything makes way more sense now. <laughs> like, we're, we're happy with this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have to say, you know, the, the second game of, like, is this what he's doing? Is this not what he's doing? Uh, it can be some of the most interesting and intriguing parts of... Uh... No, it was definitely a flank. His, his uh, pokey outy bit was totally off to the side. Yeah. Because these units, they've all got their, their center points on them. Yep. And this one was definitely off to the side. Uh-huh. So, does Gareth... Yeah, Gareth marks the center points with little arrows. Does Gareth see it? <clears throat> well, I mean, no, give he it didn't a get weakness on the mammoth, right? He missed, didn't he? No, he didn't uh, He it. failed to wound, but he got the hits. So it is weakened. Oh, okay. Has no Not that it matters, actually. Okay. So as we thought, a little trade action going here. And the mammoth weakened charging the rear of the dragon doesn't really matter. Still yeah, wounding still, on twos. Yeah, yeah, still on two. Question is, does he send the fanatics into the dragon or does he send them into the half breed? Uh, I, I think didn't see you, that until one of you guys pointed out. It's got to yeah. be a half breed. I would so do that in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, yeah. he's got to see it. <laughs> You're hoping, right? Yeah, you know, he does. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's doing it. <laughs> and it looks like the captain charged into the uh, iron caster, the healing surging caster. And the one However, it also it inspires. He took out the other inspiration hexcaster. He has the, the fanatics not facing right because they should still be flush with the dragon. Blake had his half free champion off kilter a bit. So, so now he I, might need a three to hit the. If Garrett the, is uh, counter, counter, counter charging this half breed, I don't like backing up the spear felling for yeah, you, you kind of have to go for broke and hope that you can kill that unit. I mean, he's not, he's not accomplishing anything by doing this. Exactly. The only thing he's doing is making sure that the golems are hindered if they come into the front of him. Yeah. But you're dead anyway. And they're already hitting on fives, right? What's the point of making it? Oh, they're like wavered, it looks like. Well, there's a skull on him. That's uh, Indomitable Will. He just triggered Indomitable Will this turn to give them inspiring. Oh, okay. Oh, because the golems will be hitting on sixes because he backed up. That's so right. So. But it doesn't really matter because these uh, grotesque on the left here, they have Pathfinder. You give oh. Them. So that's, he, he's just dead from that unit alone. Yeah. With six wounds already on him. I don't think there's any way he stands up to it. 
Yeah, and you're just putting the tokens further back to where when you pick them up, he's further away from threat range of your stuff. Yeah. So we got 15 hits. That was a bit below average. No, so, uh, that was... Uh, that was 15 yeah. wounds, actually. Is thir or 13 thir wounds. Yeah. Enough so to pick it up. He's sidestepping to get the... Now he's yeah, going, going forward. Because he knows he's going to have to hit those grotesques later. Yeah. And that's the other, he had the other one first. Though. If they had hit the uh, golems, every wound counts at this point. What's he undoing? Oh, he did sidestep. Yeah, the sidestep makes more sense because otherwise he's pinning him behind the dramatic. Yeah, and he Potentially. gets... I think he gets to pick that token up from the look of it too. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh. so, so this flank. if he picks that token up, does he even choose to do the overrun into the rear? Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Cause, no, I think he still does. Because why not? F you might as well do a few more wounds on it. Oh, I guess because there's no surge over there. Yeah. Right. That's, so that's debatable. Yeah. You got to put damage on them, though. Do you? Do you? I mean, you're winning right now. You have three tokens. You're going to be on your side of the board, and in order for him to get the last token, or those two over there, he has to commit these units. And what? It's turn four? Bottom four? Did he not break that guy? Is no. 13 not enough? No, it's a 12, 14. So he took the option away from him anyway. He ended up wavering him. I think that's a better uh, outcome for Garrett yeah. now that he has the center token. Five hits with the captain. Four wounds. Okay. That's not quite a good enough line to get both of them, is it? No. <laughs> and a ten and a nine. I think he just killed it. Yeah, yep. Is that line, is it, because oh that guy would have been him, right? So this line, that may actually just be enough. Maybe. Ooh, but he but killed it. it. Damn. Wouldn't, wouldn't the Abyssal Dwarf uh, align to the captain? He would. He would have, yeah. That's what they're just doing now. So here we go. I think, I think that line would do it. I think he needs like a three. Two. Two, two probably two. <laughs> yeah two and even if he just does one wound that's huge that looks like it's enough are we sidestepping i guess he wants to be sure he's in a rally range well they may have decided that it was just out rather than rolling for it right Because I think hitting there, I think he's still within 6 or 15 up, which is the important part. He doesn't stop an inch away either, so he no. should sidestep the way up against him. If he rolled that high. No, he only rolled a 2 on a d3, so uh, it's oh. 1. Oh, okay. I can never tell when my opponent switched to b3s. You know, he... he He's not switching, which I think is the right call because when you forget yeah. to switch back, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I never switch. Although it's usually pretty easy to catch when you. Uh, oh my God! Did he not kill this? Did he not kill him again? unit again? Wow! There was Six wounds and rolled a three. Well, now with brutal, that should be enough, right? No. Uh, yeah. and Nine, yeah, they're an eight ten. Are they eight ten? They're only eight ten. Oh, they might be missing the, the brutal there. Yep. <clears throat> Not that this flank actually matters that much right now. That's kind of just a, a side story. No, that's actually a big deal because if these golems kill the fanatics in one go, there's nothing threatening them. That's true. And they're looking right at two tokens. Yeah. It is a big ask, though, for that golem unit. It is, but he that killed a... 16, right? He killed a general last turn, so... That is true. 
Yeah. That's what the four plus is. Right. Uh, super stingy. Oh, looks like it's on to Blake's turn. Let me swap that over. We're on turn five. Yeah. He really needs to kill those gargoyles. Yes, he did. And he, and he did. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. He needed to remember that he killed the gargoyles. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys can remember to bring it up with him. Did he, go, did he forget that that was that brutal? <laughs> Question is: Is it like where like rules committee should come in and as we're watching the game should say something? No, absolutely not. not. Just like nope. any other tournament game, I don't think uh, people should be coming into correct rules unless they're specifically asked about a rule by both players. Because yeah. this is a tournament game, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. If you gotta keep it that way for sure. Yeah. Whoa, I think that was regen on the gargoyles. Yep. <laughs> that mammoth's going to be there all game. <laughs> I guess I think we don't have rules decisions because when we're usually playing at a tournament, it, you know, it's the logistics of having a rule at every, like uh, somebody who could make a decision at every table is very difficult. Yeah. But I think I always like to think you want to play the game in, as in, how do we do this right? And I wonder if, because we have this now, we could potentially like maybe say something, but that's something to be really discussed, I guess. Yeah, I, for for me, <clears throat> uh, if I was in Blake's shoes and those gargoyles not dying and winning after the game, I might feel, oh man, I didn't. It, I wouldn't like how that feels, but I mean, everything's different. Right. I, I'm kind of with you, Richard. I want to play it how it's supposed to be played. So for me, I would if somebody's like, "Hey, you guys are playing that wrong," I would not mind. But I, you know, everybody's different, and there's not a right or wrong way. Yeah. Me. Yeah. In ge in general, I think even with that flank earlier for the golems as well, like there was a questionable moment for me where I was thinking. I would have liked to see how the game would have played out had there been a, you know, let's say, ah, uh, there's a mistake there. Actually, but that would be telling a person too much about how to play it at the same time, though they did it wrong, right? If you guys measure it right. About that fight. Well, we also don't know what discussions they had, too, right? We're not privy to whatever they were talking about. They right. may have decided that there was a reason why that should be front door or, or whatnot as well, too. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so see like, that, right? If you take the left obsidian golems and turn them uh, reform in place and shoot the fanatics? Um, I think that is the play. Can he get the surge over there? No, he's not going to surge. He just has the shooting upgrade. For oh, them. Right, right, yeah. I think the issue is that they are hitting on sixes against the fanatics because they're, they've moved in play. cover. So, yeah, but... Yeah. But they only need one wound in a four to kill them, so. Yeah. Because they're not rallied right now. Nope, not inspired, so. So they need a six and a two to kill it, because it's piercing one on eight dice. Yep. So he uh, has a decent chance of doing it. And if that happens, and the spear, the spear phalanx is gone. Yeah, that mammoth is going to be hard pressed to get away. Yeah, I think that uh, Garrett's mammoth just wants to turn and run at that point, try or to the, get out of charge range. Or just the mammoth drop the tokens and let the uh, mountain scouts pick up the third one because that's a good point. That's another option as the long as the five at the moment. Yeah, as long as the fanatics on the right hand side against these golems survive long enough for the other mammoth to come in. Well, Blake's running out of time, right? Top of five. He's only got one more turn left after this one, potentially two. 
Uh, good call, Chris. Chris said uh, the Charnox upgrade has steady aim, so he'll need fives to hit. He still it's on four. Fives. He takes fives and shooters. I take those odds. He still does need to disengage to remember to disengage with the tap three first. He does. Or do you think he's shooting at the mammoth? Oh, yeah. Shoot at the mammoth. <laughs> yeah, that'd make Garrett happy. It's been stranger things that have happened this game. True. Been a weird one. Shout out to all the commentators, Riley, Kyle, <laughs> Sean, we got Jeremy in here, and Felix, Chris to grow as well. Hi guys. Uh, what is this weakness going on? Ah, the uh, scouts. Yeah, they're... They're uh, low nerve. It's not a piece, not a bad choice. Yeah, I like that. Maybe Is get a weaver. Oh. Place. Got one hit. Now are they playing it as two? That should be one, but should be. Ones. So now it's snakes or uh, three. Snakes to stay. Three to break. He did shoot it. Oh, now. they're shooting the mammoth? What? <laughs> like I said, <laughs> things have happened. <laughs> I guess the mammoth is more threatening? He is carrying a token, but I think you've got to get through the fanatics to get to that token. So now that's giving and, the mammoth a getaway. And, and now he's not going to roll nerve on any of the things he shot. No. Why not? Why, why would you? I'll go back to it. 17 wounds on these phalanx. So, yeah, they're, snake eyes twice. Not long for this world. Did you get the reroll? Because of the indomitable will. Nope. Bye-bye. It happened. Yeah, I don't like how you played that. Any likes this game at all? No, definitely not. I, I thought he was say you didn't like how he used the golems that turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kyle, I mean, you... I think you're uh, doing too well to play Rashad in this game. Either that or Rashad's doing too well. Kyle's asking why you're dodging him, Rashad. I'm writing him right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for another drink. I think that is definitely. Yeah. I think I need one after some of these decisions. I guess it's now uh, Gareth's turn. Bottom of five. Yeah. So he didn't, or I guess maybe they went back and rolled those nerves. Maybe that's what the last couple of rolls there were. No, that was. Uh, that was to kill the spears. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no clue on some of these things. It's a difficult one to commentate, to be honest. Yeah. But it's entertaining. Yeah, they're not really using the tokens to mark what they're doing. Well, he just moved this green token to the other combat here, so... Yep, there we go. Ooh, he's there's been rolling there's... rocks with that unit. 12 hits. Oh so then it's going to be about 11 to 12 wounds now. Yeah. At 12 oh. wounds. Oh, my God. Three to break. Four. Four to break. I want to roll like that on fours. Yeah. 
Oh, and he didn't oh, do it? Oh, he didn't do it because of Rally. Well, let's see if they remember it. Rally. Oh, my God. They got to remember Rally. <laughs> and if, if they forget, if Garrett I forgot know, Rubble and then forgot Rally, it's pretty big. Yep, yeah, it doesn't look right. like he forgot. <laughs> remember. The same. Wow. Oh, my God. I mean, it doesn't matter how many wounds they have as long as they're alive. That's exactly right. Yeah, because they'll block them up. Turn seven would be bad for Garrett, though. It, yeah, it definitely does not look good for Garrett to do a turn seven. For sure. Well, this is only top of turn five, right? Yeah. That's right. But he's got to get through these fanatics now to be able to get at these guys and get through these fanatics to get to the mammoth. So it looks really good for Gareth going into turn six. It is the bottom of five. But um, turn seven, I think, you know, turn six, I think the, both these units gets cleaned up. Now it's a matter of how far these guys can get away, right? So if I was Garrett, if I was Garrett, I would uh, drop the center token off the mammoth and charge into the golems. Um, charge the fanatics into the uh, half breed, and hope for the overrun that you didn't get last turn. See, I would do with the mammoth in the middle. I would just change facing, so he's facing the golems on the right, and then I think he would still have range to keep the token and charge them on six, and then use the fanatic to block off the golems on the left. Because if he can double up on those ma on the golems in the bottom right on turn six, then he's essentially secured his three tokens on that side of the field. He wins. Yeah. And then I think the mammoth is out of threat range of everything on the left. Oh, this is well, Captain yeah. Hex Caster for sure. He could he could do that, but it opens up potential shooting options from those golems still. Where if he just charges everything and puts all three tokens onto the uh, the scouts, then or sergeants, whatever they are. Well, if these fanatics still overrun into these golems, they can be taking away the shooting attack as an option. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. Did they not mark any wounds on that half breed? He had four before, and now he still has four. I'm no, sure he regen. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, I forgot he had regen. Yeah, he's been regening pretty well. He does a bit too much turn. We're bottom of five now. On Garrett's units. It's been such a, a really neat game. Yeah, it's been back and forth. This has been a great game to watch. I don't know if I like being closer to this left side. I would have liked to have maybe point straight down and just go for it. Yeah. How would you point it that way? He was facing this way, right? Couldn't he have just faced straight down? Pretty much, yeah. I think we're seeing the impact right now of not taking out the fanatics. If the fanatics had been taken out with the shooting, the mammoth would be in a lot weaker position. Right. Yep. Exactly. And that's why we, we were all thinking he was going to be shooting at the fanatics, which he did not. So we're maybe right maybe Garrett's baiting the mammoth on the hill, saying, shoot me again instead of charging the fanatics. So the mammoth had five more wounds over here. Can you finally get that unit? That'll kill him yeah, this time. Better get a big overrun. No, that's not bad. You might kill me, though. You never know. Oh, this there's our range. Team. He's in range. range. Wow. Finally. <laughs> I, yeah, I would have. I don't know. I would have turned the little mammoth around. Oh, <laughs> one hit with the captain. It's all he needs. One he wound. One. That's it. Ro He's roll born. a ten twice. Uh, he doesn't even need that. Okay. <laughs> no more weakness. That, that's big enough. 
Actually, hexcasters don't inspire, so he only needed it once. So these... Yeah, the half-breed. These golems with two wounds on them, yeah, they're just one good nerve roll away from dying right now. Wow, 14 hits. Wow. That's, That's a six wounds. Half -breed. Six wounds, yeah. That does it? That does it? Does he overrun? I think you have to. He needs to yeah. just like just over it too. No, yeah. Fine. Uh, yeah, it with the angle it is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, over he'll it. need a three. Yeah. Do it. Do it now. Now. It's you do the top <laughs> All right, Rashad, you do a good Conan. Do your Conan impression for the world. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I guess he doesn't want to overrun. Not yeah, sure yeah. why. Yeah, because why not? I mean, that that why gets not them, them closer to you. Yeah, you, really? Want, you really want to overrun in that position. Did four wounds here, so he needs an 11 one time. 11 or 12. No, oh. nine. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't like what he did with the mammoth in the middle. I would have liked it better if he overran. I, don't I, I, think, I think he's still safe. I think so as well. I, I don't know how the golems get the mammoth. Don't understand why he wouldn't point that mammoth towards the golems if he's just going to move that small amount. Yeah, if he wasn't going to move at all, then yeah, for sure. Uh, and in he, fact, why not overrun at that point to turn off the shooting too? Right. Maybe he wants to entice more shooting against the mammoth? Yeah, he's in, I think, uh, yeah, he's in very inspiring range of the captain, so he's probably saying, yeah, you know, he'll play the odds there. Yeah, I mean, he'd rather have him shoot the mammoth and charge the fanatics, I suppose. Well, actually, to be honest, w what we're missing here is the golems have to charge the fanatics to set up for turn seven. Yeah, I mean, they, really? they can. They have to. Oh, they I see what he did. He's put him like that, so even if the golems do charge the fanatics, he just at the doubles the mammoth fourteen. Yeah, so ten, ten inches, not fourteen. Mammoth speed five. seven. Right? Yeah, speed five, but you have the token. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's part of it. So he's forcing him to angle. position and angle instead of just pure overrun and chase him down. Yeah, but. Even if he overran and tried to chase him down, it kind of ended the other line of sight. Uh, yeah, I would have rathered him come closer to the uh, come closer to the captain, oh, just top because top. if it does go a turn seven, you, you know, on turn six, your captain can run through, and since he's mighty, he can block him up for the last turn. Yeah. I don't know. I I, don't, I would have just faced him towards the yeah, balls to make sure to kill him. This is going to be interesting with the grotesque. This is the one mammoth. Yeah, those golems have six wounds on him now, right? Not two. Yeah. One mammoth. Man, that's if you kill him like all on time. On a charge of six. Damn it. Uh, captain, too. And at that point, why not throw the mounted sergeant in there with it as well, too, and triple charge it? And the captain. Because you yeah, need, well, they need to stop the weakness, I guess. Uh, I don't think weakness matters in turn seven. Well, the... Uh, yeah, so his mammoth isn't going to be weakened this next turn, which doesn't matter. It could have. <laughs> How would Victor have charge? 
I don't think they can. I don't no, think they were able to see them. And the golem block LOS anyway. All right, All right. Can you give us the angle on that? Yeah, he can't see them. Um, yeah, he can. No, because they're the same height, right? They're both height four. Well, line of sight doesn't have to adhere to your front arc, so he can draw a line of sight from his center point, oh, just yeah, like he's yeah. doing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. and he's within 10 inches, it looks Is like. Center point yeah. in the woods? It looks like oh, it. No. His leader point's not in the woods. It's, right, it's really close because it's around this part here, right? I think that's actually in. I think it is uh, in the woods. Yeah. You're yeah. playing it that way. But so this is a gamble, though, game. because this is turn six, and he's and coming it. back onto his side of the board. That's right. And, you have to be completely and now the mammoth actually could even go in there if you really wanted to, but I don't know if you would. Yeah, because now he's on the opposite, on the wrong side of the board. Is that really what he wants to do? Yes, because he needs the third one to win. That's true. He has to. He has to do it for the win. But the problem comes in is, let's say he gets all three on his own side of the board, he still loses four to three. Right, but He's if you don't, if and you don't, it. if you lose four to five, what's the difference? Or four to six, like he's going to lose. Yeah, 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 four to six. Sorry. Yeah. True enough. But. He's playing for a turn seven with this. With this he's very much playing he's, for turn he's seven. He's playing for a win. Because he's going to take up the fanatics this turn. Uh, both of them. So it's going to be two mammoths and the sergeants for the captain. Yeah. You know, there's something to be said. So Newbie Dice asks, why play mammoth instead of giant? And there is something to be said about being a 50 mil wide instead of 75 mil wide. Sure. You do fit into more places. And I do get the longer base size restricts that somewhat. And in fact, restricts it quite a bit if you're not careful. But the 50 mil wide actually can fit into a lot more gap. Mm -hmm. And they're harder to tie down being on a 100 deep. If you charge yeah. them in the front, they can go in and... They and can I think the uh, more reliable attacks, 12 attacks, is the big thing. Yeah. Instead of D6 plus 6. Yeah, they're around the same points, right? Uh, yeah, they are. Uh, fearless is also a really big deal. Yeah, no doubt. So with the golems on the right... If you kill the fanatics, do you back up or do you stay still? Sorry, one more time, Ray. Uh, with the golems on the right, uh, if you kill the fanatics, do you back up so that you get out of range of the mammoth? Yeah. Do you back up? How much do you have to back up to do it? Uh, yeah, one inch would do it. I don't know. I don't know if you back up. Uh, I Actually, you have six wounds on you. I, I would back up because I want to shoot yeah. the scouts in the final turn. If that's your turn seven. Yeah. 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 Do, do they have six wounds? Because I can't tell what was on them and what wasn't. They haven't really been carrying it. Six. Yeah, they have six. Did he roll for regen this turn? Uh, no, no, we don't. Really roll. Uh, there's a good ten wounds on... An already dead fanatic unit. There they go. I'm Garrett. I'm hoping the game ends this turn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, we had already determined that a turn ago. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, totally no. So, I don't know. I don't think you want to back up just because I think you want the option to charge him if he tries to go um, closer towards this other combat in the bottom right. I don't know. I think staying put means this unit can pivot and kind of get out of your arc easier, though. I think you're, all, you're better off backing up for multiple reasons there. Yeah, I would back up. 
They don't have a token anyway. So he did back up. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to hold those tokens, I think that takes you out of charge range if Garrett wants to just move five inches away from you. They're what, speed eight? 16? Yeah, so he'd have to drop the tokens, um, which he does have a unit to pick them up, but it's not going to be on the. It's going to be. Uh, it's not going to be completely on Garrett's half of the board. Yeah. Well, I, I'm talking about the ones there that just killed those fanatics. Man, there's not a lot of Garrett's army left. He went oh, forward. There. there you go. Okay. <laughs> And I think Garrett easily just runs around. Oh, how much did they regen? Oh, one. Yeah, they like they have the life oh, leech. No. They have the life leech, yeah. So I don't even think he rolled regen for them. Or if he did, he didn't get anything back. Um, those don't have regens. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Defense six golem with regen would be pretty spicy though. <laughs> <laughs> So, does he just bring the mounted uh, sergeants with the mammoth and the captain here? No. I get the sergeants out of there. Yeah. You, you, and they, you can they save the pass? Oh, no, they can't. That's why he went forward. You can't come well, with they, the they can pivot. pivot completely clear, like over here. They so, that way. Blake's playing last yeah. edition's rules. He stayed an inch away. Yeah, he runs right. But they don't have nimble anymore because no, they don't. So yeah, they lose that with the token. Yeah. So an interesting idea would be: Do you drop the tokens and then uh, double charge and have your mammoth pick up the tokens where you dropped them, since it's a more resilient? I think unit. a mammoth has a good chance of picking this unit up, especially if the captain comes in. Yeah, it's I, up with the captain. Oh, I'm not sure about the captain. So I want to check on the uh, caster. Yeah, I don't know. I think you might want to hit the caster. Just turn hex off for the last turn. Well, well it has hex surge. and surge. Yeah, yeah, surge is the bigger part. Of it. Although I don't think it has any options for surge. Well, that's up here, maybe. That's true, the other ones, but it's only search for. Okay, so that's what I thought Garrett would do. He's just trying to run away, and he gets out of 10 inches of both those units, so he would force them to drop their tokens if there was a turn seven. Yeah, but the, the one, the grotesque could just drop the token, the golems could sidestep, and there'd be no issue. But right. Be, but have, he's, be yeah, he, he's locking them to that side of the field, so they're only scoring half as many points as his tokens are. You right. Still lose four. It gets up two for this, right? That makes four to four. That makes a draw. Four to four? It'd only be three to four. It'd be three to four, and Garrett would win. Yeah. Why? Because if, if Gareth puts this guy mammoth over here right if these guys drop the token to go charge they would be picking up that token on this half right. of the board. oh on the wrong half of the board yeah exactly uh, yeah uh, uh, yeah an interesting although so, if these guys drop the tokens right here in this back corner wouldn't both those tokens be still on you have to drop it inside your own footprint. Right, right, right. So you have to move and pick it up. So we have think, to see what the center is, but I actually think there's. Oh, this is the center, right? Because that is. Oh, it was like back here, wasn't it? I think the play for Garrett here is actually drop that token and charge the grotesques because the yeah. uh, shambling unit can't come pick it up. And then he locks them in to where they're not able to get on the other side of the board. Yeah, 
uh, with their two yeah, tokens. I, I agree. Interesting. Winning the game by dropping the token. <laughs> I think he wins either way, but I think that gives him the most house. Uh, the turn seven, I think, goes bad. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. But also, if he does this, forces him to come this way after, you know, ideally the Mammoth wins this combat, and he'll, have a, he'll have a counter charge at least. He's been a turn late on a couple things. A turn late on moving the pike up and a turn late on sending the mammoth that way. Yeah. If his mammoth was facing more towards the uh, bottom of the board, I think he would have been safe. Yeah, if he, he could have charged those golems with the mammoth. That's the true. Yeah. And that, then he just wins. Yep. It's pretty good. Eight hits from the mammoth. Two. Seven wounds. That's twelve. Plus brutal, if he remembers it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if he forgets it twice, can't we can't uh, let him hear four that? Once. Yeah, four he only need, only needs a four once. Well, brutal didn't matter. I don't know why he rolled twice. Brutal does matter. Well, there's no inspiring, so. Let's see what happens. Yeah. There we go. All right. Yep. All right. Let's see if the captain can kill this guy. Three wins. It's pretty good. Seven one time. Got Killed him. him. That captain's been money this game. It's killed a couple individuals. This was a far closer game than what I originally thought it was going to be. Yeah, I agree. I, I saw the center go and I thought that the uh, team and the men were in trouble. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Garrett had a good counterpunch the turn after he lost the center to uh, take away two hordes of these golems. Was that the roll for seven? I think there's a turn seven. Yep. Now let's and see if they... On that corner. How yeah. much Garrett wins there, though? Yeah, he has to drop on Foley within his base. Yeah, I think that's what they're talking about right now. Fully within the space? Is that how it works? Or partially within the base? Fully. Fully, fully, fully under your base. Yeah, it's trying to prevent the shenanigans that used to happen in second, where you would place it touching the back of your base, which was also touching another unit, yeah. which automatically got to fly away with it uh, without being able to be touched. Yeah, or, we're not playing rugby here, so. <laughs> no handoffs. That's right. <clears throat> However, that mammoth's dead. That snake's going to happen. <laughs> it could. <laughs> That's what it's going to need, though. <laughs> so it looks like he does have four wounds, or maybe not. Maybe just move that away. I, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't think it matters. I don't think in turn seven that, uh, you know, I guess if they had four wounds with turn seven, the captain and mammoth could go in and maybe pick that unit out. But so you have to use the golems to pick up those tokens, right? Right. So if these golems are not fully on the other half of the board, which I don't think they will be, would the right play have been to move the golems up five inches and then turn the grotesque? Right now, it looks like they are. They are. That's yeah, but four inches right there. They have to. It. They have to move to pick them up. I think they can do it while start staying on their side. Yeah, I think they can. They just have to touch it. They don't have to touch all of it. That's right. 
It looks like it can be picked up. So Garrett's gonna have to kill those grotesques, and that's a big ask. There's no damage on them. Uh, I, they maybe. must have regened it off, or they've lost track of it or something. Yeah, they definitely got wounds on them earlier. Right. Who hit them? On the berserkers? No, the fanatics. Uh, fanatics did, and but that was it. That was four wounds quite a while ago. They may have regened it all off. Yeah. I think the mirror is dead. Oh, yeah. Well, Blake hasn't rolled Snake Eyes yet this game. <laughs> Neither is Garrett. <laughs> no, Garrett did. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, yeah first yeah. roll. But it was yeah. like the one that didn't like matter. 12 yeah, or the one that had to guy with his general on Beast. So there is 18 range. That'll be Snake. Snakes twice. Oh, bye bye. <clears throat> so it's currently a 5 4 game. So. Man, neither one of them have very much left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can anything kill that horde in one turn? I mean, this one. Yeah, it's possible, yeah. but not likely. The center, one. the center one with the one token to turn it into a win for Garrett. Mammoth and the captain can get in. So it's still a big ask, though. That is what they were sixteen, eighteen for nerve for those guys. Should be about. So, Garrett is on. They're both on the opponent's half, so they're both counting those. Two at, at this point, the center one is going to make a difference. So yeah. this is problem of seven, yeah. Yeah, it is. High rolls from a mammoth, and the captain could turn this, but otherwise, two hits, no wounds. Oh, that is not good. He needed at least one there. Or there is there, there is no inspiring. So yeah, yeah, it's spiky nerve. Or one wound? Is the captain crushed too? He yeah. is. Oh, all right. That's big. Everything helps. Does. I mean, yeah, man, man. brutal helps too. Oh, eight hits with the mammoth certainly helps. <laughs> Seven <laughs> wounds. Oh, eight. So it needs an eight. One. Uh, uh, no, he needs oh, a nine. Needs a ten. ten, right? Oh, nine because of brutal. Yeah. I'm not a wow. Lost it in turn seven. Tight game. This will be a high point game because everything's dead. Uh, there's a lot of points in these two units. So I think Garrett <laughs> gets the plus four. And it looks like um, these two here might be over enough to push it to a four for the other guy, too. Now it's a 220. Sergeants are 100, so 320. Nope, uh, that should be a full five point win. So, what's the captain? Oh, and the captain, yeah. So, that's going to be four and four. But so that becomes a 24 point win for Blake, right? 24 to what? Uh, Wait, is it 24? So, he would get four points and another four. So, that's actually not that bad. It's a 13 point loss. Is it one point per objective for a point yeah, or one, one point, point per victory token? Point. It's one point per victory point. Okay. So are they ready to call it here? Oh, wrong one. Ah, there we go. All right, so good game. That was a fantastic yep. game. What a fun game to watch. Very much so. That was really well, cool. Here we are. Oh, uh, I need to remove somebody so that I can get uh, 
Jared in here. So I'm gonna drop you, Ray. There you go. Have a good night. <laughs> okay, so um what a game. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> so many games. Uh, game. hey, mammoth I brutal. can't wait to listen to that. I can't wait to listen to that feedback on on how I don't even know that happened. He he kicked me everywhere. I uh, made oh, too I many know. mistakes. You I really forgot the brutal up on the uh, on the gargoyles. Yeah, on the gargoyles twice. Yeah, um, <laughs> one of the times it actually mattered, it would have broken them. So yeah, that was one oh. term he wavered them. Yeah. I'm sorry, Garrett. I I completely forgot about it either. That's right. I even just asked you if you were brutal on that last combat because I couldn't remember if you were or not. Oh. <laughs> it happened. You won't um, forget again. Yeah. So um, talk. talk about your game. What did you guys think? We um, we both I'm really were just to hear that. <laughs> we're both making mistakes just all over the place. Like I I thought that his his overmaster was was brutal instead of haste. So I was just outside of twenty. And then he was like, right. oh, it's within 22. Oh, yeah. It does say haste on your army list. I should have read that, I guess. Yeah. Um, just, just a, you know, and then, like, I I intended for the, the phalanx to spin and face all of his stuff over on the right. And then I was like, oh, I need to move the captain. Let's put him right behind where I needed to move. So oh, he, yeah, that, yeah, I noticed that. You know, and then that gave that unit up that, yeah. yeah. A lot of, a lot yeah, of I've been him in for everything that hit the horde. I guess but, not playing for three weeks kind of makes you rusty. You know, you don't have to wait for your call to arms game to play. <laughs> you know, it, I, I don't. <laughs> it's um, the whole working sixty hours a week thing that's got to stop. <laughs> there was a, I need more time to play on uh, on both sides that we were kind of like, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, the. You guys, it would probably be a lot of fun for you guys to listen to it back anyway. Um, yeah, actually, we were kind of surprised when you uh, barreled your pikes right down the middle. We were kind of wondering what was going on there. So uh, obviously, yeah, just not, not remembering about the haste on the overmaster. Um, well, and, and if I wouldn't have put the captain in the way, they would have been fine. If they would have yeah, been able to spin to face that flank, like that yeah. was the real mistake. Yes, that was the big one, yeah. We mentioned but. that too, yeah. <laughs> it's um, yeah, it was good. It was a uh, lots of back and forth, which is good. It's what do you want to want to see in a, a game like this? Uh, we thought, you know, when you lost your pipe block in the center, that that was going to be pretty much game over, and it'd be a, a pretty boring game from there. But you fought your way back into it. You kind of uh, made Blake sweat right to the bitter end, especially yeah, once he... you picked up that one unit with the. Oh, the, the two tokens. I thought that was a big turning point for for you, Garrett, in the game. So, yeah, I just couldn't yeah. couldn't protect him. I took a bad angle in I, the woods, but yeah. So with the mammoth here, the one that you got rear charged. Uh, sorry, I, I don't have the screen up. The mammoth got. Uh, here, let me uh, bring the screen up. So when you had the mammoth over here in the center. That was that you got rear charged. The turn before you turned to face them down uh, in like this direction, and Ryan was kind of wondering why you didn't face them towards the uh, lesser obsidian golems down near this five marker instead. Um, was that an so, out of practice? So, thing? Well, I mean, so they were up. I, I pivoted them ninety moved them. and moved them five. Yeah. But yeah, you know, so, use the full five was the thing, and then we were kind of wondering if you didn't, weren't going to move the full five, why not just like turn the face in a different direction altogether? Yeah, because then you could have charged it into those. Yeah. In the lower right. Yeah, I and thought he was going to turn and then charge him down there. Yeah. So I think you'll see that when you when you play it back there too. Um, but there was I might have just forgot to move him. Yeah. Well, honestly, I think I pivoted him and then I didn't move him, or maybe I, because the a intention was to I moved ninety. And then go the five. I mean, they're kind of hamstrung with the tokens, but yeah. No, I I think you really. It's like I didn't think his grotesques could get around his obsidian golems, and so I wasn't planning for that. 
I, yeah, uh, when the Fanatics made that charge around, like when they made they charge around to hit the Fanatics, I thought that was a big turning point there too. Yeah, I I didn't think they could make that charge. I wasn't even thinking about it, um, and so I thought I was a little more protected than I was. Yeah. So how about I, you? I boys? just barely had a gap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I made quite a few mistakes. I know I left my hex caster down on the bottom because I moved him out of order how, how I should have done it. Um, and then I gave him the one flank with a mammoth on the unit with two tokens, which I never should have done. Yeah. Um, and I should have just reformed them to put them in the front. Uh, would have made that whole thing different, and I wouldn't have had to have, you know, gotten very, very, very lucky on the end to uh, to be able to survive it. But uh, yeah, that was basically the mistakes I made. I think the big ones. Uh, I thought I had it, everything going pretty well in the center. And then all of a sudden, I left that one gap in there for the mammoth, and everything disappeared. And then after that, it was just me getting lucky at the end. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for letting us watch your game. Uh, this has been Dash 28 Live. Everybody say goodbye. And, thank uh, you. We'll end the broadcast. Thanks, thank Garrett. Watch. <laughs> thank, thank you, everybody, for watching now, and people are going to be watching in the future. Mm -hmm.